the uh, regular workshop for uh, Tuesday, September 8, 2020. And uh, I'd like to uh, ask Commissioner Bill Pickens if he would uh, offer our invocation and then followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Harvey. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this glorious day and all the wonders in it, Father God. We just thank you for this opportunity uh, for this workshop today. We want to thank staff for the presentations they're going to make. And Father God, we just ask that the commissioners discuss it and deliberate and come up with the best answers for the good of the public uh, of Putnam County. Father God, we just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Pickens, and thank you, Commissioner Harvey, for doing that for us today. Um, we're going to move into the uh, public comment portion um, of the uh, meeting. Um, I see we have about several people already still froze out. Uh, Jacob, is that our, our Wi-Fi doing it or is it on their end? I see Julianne's froze out and uh, Rich just came back to us, it looked like. Are you still froze out, Rich? I just try not to move a lot. Okay, all right, I got you. <laughs> yeah, you never blink. I can... I can hear you, Julianne, but your picture's frozen. Okay. Well, it yeah, looks like the whole program's reloading again. Uh, Jacob, are we streaming this throughout the int intranet today? Well, with this many participants, we may have to stop streaming it through the intranet and let, let someone watch it on the uh, YouTube if they want to watch it. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. You might want to explain what the intranet versus the internet is. So, because we're not limiting public by going the intranet. No, uh, that, that just. Uh, the intranet is let the county employees can see it throughout the county system at the same time that everybody else can. So, you know, we're not limiting anything. If anything, we'll turn that one off, not the intranet, not the internet. It will, it's going to run. If we lose that feed. We're going to stop until we get it back. Um, Thank you, sir. Okay, well, we'll try to get through this best we can. Um, uh, is Julie back on the call or do we lose her? Oh, I see her now, I think. Anyhow, we're gonna try to move on. To maybe we can work out some of these technical difficulties as we go. <clears throat> the uh, public comment section, is there anybody on the call that would like to make comment in the public comment section? Okay, hearing none, we'll close public comment. And uh, I've got another minute before we can uh, recess the board and uh, and convene the Port Authority workshop. Uh, we had a 205 time certain. So. Mr. Chairman, I have 205. Okay, thank you. At this time, uh, we'll recess the uh, Board of County Commissioners meeting or workshop and we will convene the Port Authority workshop. Um, is there anyone on the call that would like to make public comment? Okay. Um, we have the uh, item 3B, which is to uh, request a lease to Port Authority dock. <clears throat> Ms. Young, are you back with us yet? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, and I also see you at the moment, so good deal. All right, excellent. 
Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, commissioners. I have received an email from Mr. Martin of JNM Metalworks LLC, who understands that we're still in negotiations with St. John's Shipbuilding. However, he proposes to rent the portion of the bulkhead for two thousand dollars per month for barge repairs and maintenance of the for the barge company. He does desire to sign a lease agreement for a year at that rate with an option to renew for at least another year if uh, mutually agreeable. He does understand that this is non-exclusive usage of the dock, um, but is seeking the board's direction as to whether or not you would entertain that. Can I speak? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, well. Welcome, we'll welcome, right Commissioner Goddard. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, uh, right now, we are in negotiations with uh, uh, with Mr. Gnu on being the dock master there. So I, I, I don't really see a problem with leasing this to Mr. Martin with the understanding it needs to be in there that once we once we make an agreement with Mr. Gnu that uh, that he would be the one that would be directing this. So if we, what I'm saying is if we're renting it for $2,000 a month, and I don't know what the footage of this thing is, Mr. Gnu, I think was a dollar 40 a foot that he would be, uh, looking at renting that out for. So anyway, what I'm saying is we rent it to him under the understanding that once Mr. Gnu becomes our dock master, then he would, his lease would then fall underneath Mr. Gano's and whatever his conditions were. Any other comments? Are you through now, uh, Commissioner Goddard? Yes. Okay, any other comments at this time from other board members? Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Turner. Waving at me. <clears throat> I believe Mr. Harvey was ahead of me, sir. Okay, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Rawls. Um, this is about the fourth time we've heard from Mr. Martin, who's a friend of mine, been a friend of mine for life. But um, I kind of tend, to, I'm leaning on both sides here. Mr. Gannou needs to come to the table with some serious stuff and get this thing moving forward. Commissioner Goddard's right. He did talk about the dock master and the different insurances that were required. But really, truly, we're kind of being held up right here. And uh, we need to get this thing moving. Um, I think Mr. Martin wants to do something. I don't know how many jobs he's going to provide, but we keep sitting back and sitting back and sitting back. And it it's really time for Mr. Gnu to come to the table. Either it's time. It's just really time. So that's, that's what I have to say about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Harvey, uh, Commissioner Rawls, did you have something to add, sir? Yeah, um, so uh, this morning, Mr. Commando was, uh, can you guys hear me okay, by the way? Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Commando was um, indicating that they, uh, I guess the uh, contract negotiations were about to be resolved and are moving forward. So um, I just wonder if, if we shouldn't, you know, wait till we let our staff finish what they started. Chair, okay. Chairman, Chairman, yes. Uh, Ms. Young. So to be clear, and just to make sure we're all on the same page, what's under negotiation with Mr. Gnu and St. John Shipbuilding at this time is just lease of the facility. In the workshop where he talked about the potential of being a dock master, um, what the board's consensus was, was to work out the lease agreement first. And then if we wanted to entertain a dock master, we would go down that that road. So the current negotiations and contract clauses that Mr. Commando is working through are for the lease of the facility, uh, similar to what he had last year and was up for renewal again. Okay. <clears throat> yes, Commissioner Rawls. Um, <clears throat> did his lease include or not include the use of the bulkhead? It included non-exclusive use of the bulkhead. So even throughout his lease, if another entity wanted to use the bulkhead on a temporary or longer term basis, they did that through general services uh, since what, since whenever time general services adopted the Port Authority. 
and then general services invoiced that entity for that <clears> short term <throat> usage and coordinated with St. John Shipbuilding to um, ensure both parties had access as needed. Mr. Chairman. So I, I got more questions. Mr. Commander, what does the new agreement include regarding use of the bulkhead under the agreement that's being negotiated currently? I hadn't changed anything as it related to the non-exclusive use. Most of the work I'm doing was based on the comments his attorney presented on providing the environmental protections for cleanup and things like that. One of his one of his concerns was if somebody brought a boat up um, and was working on it, while well, they have um, insurance on the the property, how would they be indemnified? Was that addressed in this new agreement? No, because that, um, and that's where I've said a couple of times, um, they have, they, Mr. Gano and his attorney made comment that they have suggestions for us, but we never saw any of those things. So okay. I'm working just purely on the lease and then separate from the lease, as uh, Ms. Young stated, I expect that they're going to come to us after looking for a master, uh, doc master or master services agreement. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't we discuss all of it one time? What would be the benefit of having two separate agreements? I, I don't know that there's a benefit one way or another. Okay. I'm done. Normal circumstances, a dock master agreement would go through a procurement um, scenario of some sort uh, to ensure impartiality that all entities wanting the opportunity to serve as our dock master and to generate revenue from a public uh, public land were given the opportunity to equally submit some sort of proposal during a, a normal cycle. That's a and that's an independent process of someone wanting to lease a building for our facility or for the facility. And that is correct, Mr. Chairman. When we talked about this originally, that was part of the conversation back then, and that's why we have uh, seg uh, segregated the two agreements. <clears throat> yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you. In the proposal here that staff put together, it says that barge repairs and maintenance. I just don't see how we can have one company on one side doing something inside of a building and using the dock. And then the other company wouldn't have a building and just be doing repairs and maintenance. Help me understand what the thought process is, is is here because if I was St. John Shipbuilding, I would want, well, I have my inside building, I have workers, I have, but you're talking about another entity that pulls up, works, and then drives off. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, if I understand Mr. Martin's process correctly, he may dock there for short stints of time, so weeks at a time, if you will. Um, St. John's Shipbuilding was using both the internal facility to build their um, their vessels and then, of course, launch it and or um, if it's a short term repair, then they would dock it up. But that that dockage um, is is of sufficient size that even with St. John's Shipbuilding and other entities that would come and go, um, we had the opportunity for multiple users to come in and go to, to offload or unload um, products was is mostly what our dockage is used for even during um, periods of time where that facility is utilized at capacity. So the, the dockage, what's done at the dockage is generally separate from what's done at, inside the facility and then offloaded and launched and that kind of thing. But certainly there is some, some carryover or similarities to what can be done there. How do you feel about- Just a second, are you, are, you, uh, are you done for a moment, Commissioner Harvey or no? I have one more question to Mr. Commando, sir. Okay. Rich, how do you feel about Commissioner Goddard's statement about letting, if we went forward with this with Mr. Martin today, letting them know that we intend to enter into it. We have, I don't want to say intend, we're contemplating entering into an agreement for dock master services that might require additional insurances and identification. How do you feel about that right now i don't have a problem i think we should be as upfront as possible with people to let them know kind of what our intentions are i don't 
as a public entity, I don't think anything's been a secret. We've been talking about this in public meetings for, for quite some time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Goddard. Okay, I just want to, you know, in, in my career, I have worked at many docks, United States and outside the United States, and you always deal with a dock master. The dock master makes sure that you have everything that you're supposed to have in order to be on that particular site. And he also coordinates, as you were talking about, you, you have somebody working on a ship or a boat that does not have uh, a building right there. So they're bringing in all their equipment to work on that boat on trucks. And so the dock master regulates how much stuff is going on that dock, what's going on that dock, whether it's dangerous, whether it's, uh, it's just a necessary thing I believe we need to look at. So I, I don't have a problem <coughs> with leasing to Mr. Martin right now because it, it, it's, it's a necessity for him and it's something that we could use. But I do believe it needs to be in that contract that if we select a dock master, that that lease will now go underneath that dock master and it could change. But he needs to be aware of that, I believe. Uh, it, it, I, now that I see that there's so many different parts of this thing, but a dock master, a dock master is a very important part of having a dock, if you will, uh, because they do regulate for our benefit and their benefit. That's all I so, have. So if I'm understanding you correctly, you're recommending that we, uh, if we offer him the opportunity to, uh, to rent the dock up until such time as a dock master uh, comes forward. And then the, at that time, the dock, the uh, dock, he would go underneath the lease agreement uh, with the dock master. Is that what I'm understanding? That's the way I would see it. And I think that's the fairest way to do it. Okay. Is there a, a motion by yeah, commissioner Pickens? Yeah, I was to go back when Julianne spoke, that's what I was I understood or remembered that they were going to look at renegotiation, the original lease for the building. And then presentations were going to come uh, of the dock master later. So I, I think maybe we're in agreement with that. I'm not saying that we don't need one. I'm not sure, but I, I, I want to make sure like Commissioner Goddard says that, that if we do lease this to this particular individual, that if we do go into the dock master, it is that it, it, it changed the lease changes or he's under his particular, um, uh, he's under him, you know, with, with that particular lease. And then we need to make sure that, that, um, that we will be able to use this if Seminole needs this. And I guess Veritas Steel uses it periodically and GP may be bringing in more uh, equipment too. So I need, think we need to be, this needs to be well thought out. Okay. Julie, do you have sufficient uh, information at this point or do you want a motion that we accept or not accept or how would you like for this to move forward to make you, uh, to make, to give you enough, uh, a direction on what to do next. I'm going to pass the buck because this is ultimately going to go to legal counsel. So, uh, Rich, can you tell us what you would need in order to prepare some sort of lease agreement from the commission? I just, what we have now, um, I have the general direction and then we'll try to put in those safeguards that allow us to modify that lease agreement. And if Mr. Martin understands that we're looking at a dock master at some point in the future. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Rawls. Um, <clears throat> do we have a requirement? Well, one of the things that was tossed around last time, Mr. Gano and his attorney, Ron, I think his attorney was mentioning the fact that um, there was no requirement for L and H insurance. Are we requiring that now, or is that something that we should be requiring uh, for this type of work? Um, Rich, I haven't looked at that with the with the agreement for Mr. Martin. I'll put that in my notes as well. Because it. Um, one of the concerns that he had, he had sent pictures out, was that uh, this same person was loading fuel from across, from the land side to the seaside off of a, a bulk truck into 55 gallon drums. And there was no insurance at that time in play. And I just want to make sure that we have some sort of indemnification, obviously, because we own the bulkhead. We're responsible for any spillage if they don't have it. So hopefully we you know, have the right requirements for insurance in place in case they do have a spill or have an accident. Um, that would require them to, to have the uh, Longshore and Harbor 
insurance. Because I know, um, you know, anytime you work over an out of a body like that, whether it's on a boat or a bridge or a dock, you're supposed to carry it. So I just want to make sure that, that we do require that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Okay, so is there a, Rich, do you need a motion to move forward, Commissioner Harvey? You know, I, I do think we need to move forward, but I think it's going to be all up to Mr. Commando at this point to bring us back a product that we can yeah. vote on. So I, I think by consensus, we put the ball in Mr. Commando's court, start working out those negotiations as all the commissioners have voiced their concerns, and then bring us back a finished product at a later date. Is that okay by the commissioners? Please show your hand by consensus. Uh, that's what we're going to do, Rich. By consensus, we're going to put it in your hands to negotiate a lease to move forward with him, letting him know that at some point we may have a dock master and at which time he will become underneath the dock master and the rules of that dock master. Yes, sir. All uh, right. Thank you. Um, is there any uh, gen general discussion on the Port Authority items? Uh, yes, Matt, I see you waving. Um, I just wanted to bring up, there's a couple of things related to the Port Authority that are in the fee schedule item that's coming up under the uh, under the next few items. I didn't know if we wanted to just briefly talk about those real quick. I think we should, Matt, if it has to do with Port, I think we should do it under the envelope of the Port Authority. Yep. Um, on page 49 of the agenda, which is the, the PDF, it's, it's page 32 of the fee schedule, but it should be page 49 in, um, in the agenda. Um, we're proposing the addition of uh, water rates for customers out at the barge port. Um, this is kind of one of those things, Rich, I don't know if, if it should be under port because it's technically for our utility system and it's the fees that the county itself is charging. It just happens to be the water system at the barge port, which is owned by the Port Authority. So I don't know if that one is, is really something that's applicable to the port since it's the utility that's actually charging the rates. And then the only other change is the uh, proposed change on page 50. Let him answer, man. Okay. <laughs> I think I need to, I'd need to talk with Matt offline about that a little bit more about kind of where the money flows for that. Okay. That's fine. I, I have no problem with that, but knowing the rates are going to go up just a little bit, it is a utility department that's selling the water to the port area. So I don't know that it's a port authority issue. Go ahead with your next one, Matt. Um, the next one is, is on the next page, page 50 of the PDF. It's just simply removing the charge for current tenants, $35 per day. That's, Simple, straightforward. Okay. That, uh, you yeah, know, Julianne and I. We're not allowing daily, daily tenants at the port, are we? That, that would be for somebody that's a current tenant of the port. And Julianne and I kind of discussed it, and we both thought that it that should really be addressed in the proposed lease agreement that is uh, being worked on with any tenant that we have out there and not just included in our fee schedule. Okay. Does any commissioners have any questions or comments concerning those two changes? Okay, hearing hearing none, we're going to um, on on the on the water. It's my understanding that the county actually technically not, cannot operate a utility authority, and this does have to operate under the port authority. Um, I'm I'm in favor of raising the water rates, but what I'd like to know is by raising the water rates um, to what we what was proposed. What does that do to our, if you take a look at the last year, because we were losing money, are we now breaking even or? From, from what I understand, and Mr. Troxell can weigh in, but looking at these rates, these look like the proposed rates that we're being charged for the city of Palaka for any of the connections out there, because this utility system is actually, we, we purchased the water from Palaka and then it's provided to uh, the customers out at the Port Authority. And so this is the, City of Placa, this is the way they do their rate structure with the different size meters. So Mr. Troxell can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe those are the, the rates that we're paying. Is this, the guy of the city was um, raising their water rates. Does this include the new water rates? Okay, so we're good for at least a year. Okay. Yes. Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, if we don't have any more questions on that item at this point, then we'll uh, we'll move on to the and adjourn the. Uh, I got um, uh, if I could, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Okay, yes, under, yes. Is this under the port or the next one. Splash pad, the port. Um, okay, so I'll, uh, the, the port authority workshop is not adjourned yet. Commissioner right. Rawls. Um, we we agreed to talk about the splash pad this afternoon. Um, want to see what the possibility is of us going ahead and putting in the research system um, to number one, save on the water costs uh, in perpetuity. Number two, um, not have the water gathering around the splash pad and keep the ground wet. Um, yeah, you done for now, sir? Yep. Okay, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Rawls, I think that's a great idea. Kind of walk me through what that would look like. It Would it be piping around the splash pad that would collect the water well, sent to a, a storage tank. There's, there's currently there's a all drain. Different, some, there's all different, different kinds of them. They could either run it, collect it around the edges and send it to a recirc or they could drain it straight to the recirc, either one. But even with that, we discussed this earlier and because it was another 50 to 65, we were all in favor of it. We wanted to see where our budget shook out before we did it. So, I think in, in this commissioner's opinion, I, I do agree with Commissioner Rawls. That's an excellent idea. We need to look into it. We were hoping that the city would actually participate a little bit in the uh, in giving us free water, but that hasn't taken place. And then we were hoping that we could use the water from uh, our existing well out there and treat it some and use it and it would be cheaper. But, but, but as of right now, the splash pad is being run by city water. And I think that is definitely the next step. I think we need to move forward and try to find out what the cost would be to recirculate the existing system. And the, uh, we'd still have to add some water but on a recirculating system, there's going to be some treatment involved. And with that happening, we can possibly bring the, some of the water, the additional water that we'll need to make this work from our existing well and just get off of the, uh, just get off of the city's water system to most of, if not all of the degree or use it for a backup instead of having to pay so much money for it. So uh, by consensus of the uh, commission, I'm going to ask Ms. Young if she'll start looking into the, recirculation of the uh, water at the splash pad and see where we can go from there. I don't think we're going to be open, but another month or so, and it's going to be closed for the winter anyhow, probably. So uh, maybe that'll give us time by spring to have something put in or at least know what we're going to do or something where it'll operate all of next summer under whichever system we decide to go with. And by then we may have a water bill to know exactly how much a month it costs to, uh, Fuel it, fuel it with the uh, city's water. So, is that satisfactory to you, Commissioner Rawls? Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. Is that satisfactory to the rest of the commissioners? Can yes, I sir. comment? Yes, sir. Commissioner Harvey. Commissioner Goddard. Oh, Commissioner <laughs> Goddard. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We when we were doing all our discussion on this. Because we talked about the to to recycle that water, the treatment was going to be we thought might be too expensive. That's why we decided to use the city's water. And I don't know who who it fell on to to talk to the city to negotiate a better price on that one. But it, it sounds like that didn't happen because we were looking if we could get a better price, that that would be the better way to go than trying to put up a recycle, you know, a, where you reclaim the water, like you said, it has to be treated before it can go back out. Yes, sir. And I think what's going to happen, the city was reached out to, and they didn't offer any kind of a break whatsoever. And in fact, I believe they charged us a little extra if they could. And so uh, with, uh, with that being said, I, I think that, uh, that what we needed to do was find out how we get there, how, how much it's costing us with the city, how much the recirculating system is going to cost and how much the recirculating system is going to take to maintain it and actually get it done. And so uh, I don't know that you could get all that information until you got it up and running. And I know that the, um, unless something happened in the works that I'm unaware of, they did put in the correct piping to where a recirculation system can be hooked up without tearing anything apart. So I think we can't make that decision until it was running. Now it's running, 
get how much it's going to cost from the city to operate it for a month and then put the numbers together and see which way the commission wants to go with it. So everybody good now? Yes, sir. Okay. So Miss Young, if you'll start working towards that, I would appreciate it. Uh, we're going to at uh, this time adjourn the Port Authority workshop. And, uh, and we're going to reconvene the uh, regular workshop um, and we're going to move into 4A, uh, General Services Administration CARES Act status update. Um, now, I don't know with the, uh, with the agenda state having basically the, the uh, General Services and Administration allocation of the uh, of general funds, which is also, and then there's another CARES Act deal in here also, I don't know when the appropriate time exactly would be, so I'm going to do it right now. And if, uh, <clears throat> and we're going to add a line item, or before we talk about it, we're going to talk <clears throat> about we we made the comment a while back that once we had a good feeling of where this CARES Act money and what was happening with it, that we would take a look at nonprofit organizations, and uh, and I say now that we've had been running this, I'm very disappointed and that it's taken this long to get it going. But now hopefully this portion of it will go faster now that they've worked out a lot of the kinks. And so with that being said, I think that we need to open this program up to nonprofits. We got about 700, 700 uh, spots left in this program. Uh, I think we're around 300-ish. And so uh, with ones that have turned in, so you know, before we start this program, I'd like to uh, to get a get a motion if we could, because technically our program shut down on August 25th, if I'm not mistaken. I'd like to open this program up until September 20, 23rd, which would be the day after the next meeting, and uh, would give us time to open it again, and also open it up to nonprofits at the same time as we uh, we advertise that it's open back up to businesses and nonprofits. Okay, you need a motion? Yes, sir. I'll make the motion that we do include the nonprofit on our next, uh, what, what are we calling that? Our next uh, well, rollout? Actually, it's exactly the same rollout again, Commissioner Goddard. It's just we're going to extend the date on the existing plan and include nonprofits. Okay, all right. Then I make a motion that we include the nonprofits on our new extended date of uh, this rollout. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Goddard and a second by Commissioner Rawls and discussion by Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, if you look at Clay County's um, nonprofit and using the same Widow Brian, um, are we going to be using that format that they, they had to be providing some type of COVID-19 relief or, or service there, thereof? And are we going to keep the same amount at 3000 or would you rather make that a different amount? Those are my two questions. Uh, Commissioner Pickens. You're muted, sir. Those were two of my questions also. And also what defines a nonprofit it have to be 501 C three churches included. Um, and then I also have, you know, questions on say what the breakdown is of the people who applied. So I guess that's 316. So, uh, it looks like 82 are, were, were actually eligible, five ineligible. That's pretty clear, but missing documents, will those people be, um, you know, notified that they had missing documents and they'll be able to reapply. And, um, and so those are my questions right right now. And then, you know, like Mr. Harvey says, you know, uh, are we going to use the same dollar amount also? Uh, Commissioner Rawls, you had a comment, sir? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think we should consider raising the amount, in, um, the total amount anyways, um, to above 3,000, even for for, uh, for all businesses, whether nonprofit or for-profit. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit perplexed as to, um, we've got 82 that are application eligible. Does that mean that they're approved? Um, and then the five that are ineligible, I, I, I picked up on those. Those are pretty easy. But the ones that are missing documents, um, 
are, 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 are we reaching out to them? Are they going to get the documents in? Are, you know, are, is anybody following up to find out if they're, they're going to be eligible or if the, the missing documents is something that's going to be a deal breaker? Well, yeah, I, I, before we get right into the, to the uh, meat of the whole program, I think I've stole Miss Young's thunder. And for that, I apologize, but she has an update prepared on the whole program that would maybe answer some of the questions. Right now we have a motion on the floor that we're going to extend the date and we're going to open up the, to nonprofits. Right. And so, and so if we could go ahead and get a motion on that, uh, may vote on that motion, uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Now at this point, sorry, Miss Young, I didn't mean for all that. I know you're probably going to answer a lot of these questions in your presentation, but I just wanted to go ahead and get that one out of the way. So uh, please take over if you would, please. Sir, thank you. Um, and just an update, the, these numbers that were in the report are obviously changing daily. Um, and as the, the report given to you were numbers as of August 31st, we continue to work them um, all, all every day, all day. So we are currently up to an application eligible number of 99. That application ed eligible number are the number of applicants who have everything in order and are ready to sign the grant agreement between us and the applicant and receive their payout from the finance department. We have four ineligible. As Commissioner Rawls said, they're pretty easy to distinguish. Um, most of those that were marked ineligible are ones that were just way outside your parameters, i.e. a Gainesville, um, a company based in Gainesville, a company based in St. Augustine, that kind of thing. So that's not an issue. The missing documents portion um, the county um, is county staff is working to reach out to each of those 118 applicants to determine if they have the paperwork and or a suitable paperwork that would serve in its stead. So we have had a couple of businesses that say, hey, I don't have this exact document. And so we are reviewing alternative forms of documents that maybe they can provide. Um, staff's making every um, every effort to find a way to make each applicant pass within reason without violating anything in your CARES Act um, and to not be so stuck on the actual documents listed. They would be the easiest, obviously, but we can take some supplemental documents that would serve the same purpose um, to validate this business's existence. And so those documents can be turned into staff. Um, and then we still have one in review, and that is in review by our CARES Act consultant. And then we have 95 currently to date that have been canceled. Those are applicants that have submitted most, 90% of those are applicants that submitted the application more than one time. So they may have filled it out, gotten to the end and forgotten that they had to submit the paperwork. And so they did a whole nother application to upload their documents rather than just wait to submit their paperwork. Um, so we do have a host, those that are canceled, um, you can you can likely remove from your eligibility number. So of the 317 right now, 95 of those are going to be counted out. Um, and but the 118 staffs making every reasonable effort to see how many of those we can qualify. Um, some of them just require a little bit of review by someone in house who may be more familiar with the entity and the company. And we've been able to clear some of those that have been either marked ineligible or missing or on the fence. So we're working with the CARES Act consultant. We're also working with the entities to make sure that they know that they can submit it. Um, as far as your numbers, that's a breakdown of those, of those numbers as of today. And that was just a few minutes ago. That was the status report. The application, um, Although we set a soft deadline of the 25th, we never formally closed it out and we have had them still trickle in. So if they're working with the chamber um, or whomever, we told them just go ahead and submit it. So we didn't ever close it. It's never been removed from our website. If businesses wanted to engage um, their application, they, they certainly had the opportunity to. I believe that should answer most of your questions on the business grant program. I do understand you'd like to open it up to nonprofits. Um, and I believe from your motion that you just carried that your intent was to open it up at the same dollar amount. And again, um, like Commissioner Pickens, I'm assuming your definition of nonprofit is going to be a 501c3. But I'm going to need some a further direction on who's going to qualify and who's not. We've had some additional requests by partners outside of constitutionals and municipals, um, groups like the ARC. 
who have very specific proposals well above and beyond um, just a, a stipend, if you will. So I just need board direction on how we're going to handle all of these different categories of, of um, requests. Okay, Commissioner Pickens. Yeah, that was my question. You know, one of them is, you know, how how do we determine which ones qualify? I don't know if there's different levels of nonprofits or if they all have to be a, a 501c3 to be, um, you know, clearly a a qualified or registered nonprofit. And are churches in this nonprofit um, also? So the other caveat to remember is that we're going to have to tie it back to COVID in order for it to be eligible under the CARES Act funding. So they either have to prove an impact by COVID or prove additional expenditures related to mitigation of COVID efforts. So churches, for example, unless they were operating something that was shut down due to COVID, as far as revenues, um, it can't be used for revenue replacement to begin with, but they're going to have a hard time. However, they may have purchased um materials and supplies to have on site for disinfectant or hand sanitization or masks or ppe or even social distancing things um i guess it's even possible that some of the churches bought some additional electronic means in order to set up virtual uh worship services i know many of our area churches have done so so we definitely would need some program guidelines behind what the commission's intentions are well on top of all that they uh the cares act monies are allowed to you pay for utilities and and such as their light bill while while they were closed down or while they had income reduction. We can't replace the income, but we can pay for the expenses that were displaced because of the income, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Julie? Yes, sir. I'm going to have to um, go back and have some consultation. I know that the CARES Act through the housing specifically allowed for utilities um, and, and things of that nature. Um, but if they could make the, my understanding is, and we would have to get some, a litmus test from our consultant, but my understanding is if the impact was related to COVID, then yes, we could claim it as long as another aid didn't duplicate that award. So if their light bill went unpaid because their services were shut down and revenues were lost, then I believe we could make that stretch. But again, I'm, I would need to consult with our CARES Act consultant on how to set that particular aspect of the program up. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> I think that uh, by the motion that we just had, it looks to me like the commission is very interested in opening this back up to or opening this up to the nonprofits. Would you touch out base with Widow Brian and say that we've, uh, that we have voted to uh, open this up and to and to try to get them to keep us within having to pay the money back by some, they came up with a, a set of items that, that needed to be done the best of our knowledge to keep us from repaying the original funds. Could we ask them to try and come up with a set that would deviate into a nonprofit status and, and do the same? Absolutely, I'll be happy to do that and report back to the board. Okay. Well, they, I, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to take it a step further. I'd like to go ahead and get the program up and running and try to come up with whatever they can at, at whatever level the board's fixing to come up with. Commissioner Harvey, I apologize, sir. Please go ahead. No, you were in the middle of the conversation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think, if, again, if we can, Rich has, has experience with Clay County. I have them pulled up on my website right now. Uh, I think that's that's a pretty easy following right there because they're using what O'Brien also. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I I think really we need to go up to like 5,000 for these nonprofits who have been helping on the, the COVID related situation. Um, just take, for example, we get 200 nonprofits at 5,000, that's a million dollars. So I think we should raise that up a little bit but uh, I'm good where it's at right now. If we can go ahead and at least get started because a lot of people are interested. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I have one more comment, but I can hold off until we're done with this discussion, sir. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not so sure that 
depending on how much mm -hmm. can of worms we'd open up or if we'd get in trouble because we did it. Uh, our biggest concern when we started this was three, 3,000 a piece where we could do a thousand businesses. Um, I'm not so sure at this point being this far into the program that we shouldn't knock it down to 750 at this point until it's reapproved and do 4,000 for 750, including the businesses that have already been approved, but not paid. Um, so, uh, cause none of them have been paid yet. It's my understanding. They're all the application have just been approved. So that's just another something to throw out there for discussion, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, just a second, Commissioner Rawls, Commissioner Pickens, I think was next. Yeah, along those lines, as you said that some have been approved as we see on this report. Um, Julianne, um, I, I know the people that reached out to me when they applied, they had some complaints about not being able to go back up. They had to restart. So hopefully that had been taken care of. But when they submitted it, there was no uh, verification that it had been uh, submitted and received. Has that been taken care of? And then also, um, how are these people going to get notified? Because I had somebody ask me Sunday that he had applied and he's heard nothing. He doesn't know if he's been turned down or if he, he's still eligible and being processed. So uh, I just wonder if you can answer those, those questions. Yes, sir. The um, the issues with the application uh, expressed have been addressed and corrected. There's now an auto generated email basically that says thank you for your submission or along those lines. Um, and as far as notification, uh, county staff is going to notify uh, the applicants will be um, collecting the final agreement between the applicant and the grantee or and the county and then preparing the package to send to finance. So that's something that um, your local local staff will do um, over the next week or so with the, the ones that are eligible to be paid out can be paid out as soon as they sign that grant agreement and provide it back to us. And one last comment. Um, I know we took a little bit of heat about how hard it was to fill that application out early on, I guess, but I talked to a Putnam County business person who also has a business in two other counties. And he said he applied in all three counties. By far, the one for Putnam County was the easiest one that had to submit. So. Well, thank you. Oh, okay. Commissioner Harvey, did you have something to add, sir? Yes, sir, I do. I think it's time that we have a conversation about getting somebody who is focused on our CARES Act. I know Widow O'Brien's our consultant and they're keeping us out of the weeds on getting in trouble, but we pretty much dumped this on Julianne and she's got her own work to do. And I think that easily the CARES Act money will pay somebody. And I think we just need to have some, an eye on the ball because I think it's, it's terrible that we have asked Julianne to step up and truly other things probably aren't getting done that need to get done. And I don't know that for a fact. I'm just speculating because Julianne's a very hard worker and very dedicated. But I think it's time that we look at having somebody who focuses in on CARES Act because this might stick around this whole year and all of next year. And, you know, I, I, I'm with the rest of the board. I want to get this money out in every fashion we can to help our local citizens. Uh, but I think it's time we had this discussion. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, uh, Commissioner Rawls. Um, I'm in agreement. I think we do need to increase the, the allotted amount from 3,000. I think we should go to 5,000 for all businesses, like I said, nonprofit or for-profit. Um, and I think we should also consider having a, a component for um, citizens that, that have been affected by COVID, especially our uh, senior citizens who are locked in um, folks that may have may have had a, a part-time job and lost their income may be struggling with paying their bills. Um, you know, the, the more money that we can get into the business world, the more money will come back in the form of tax and less revenue loss we're going to experience ourselves because there's there's going to be a a trickle down effect that we're going to we're going to bear the brunt of the loss of revenue at the end. So uh, I, I think we should we we should consider uh, beefing this up. For the uh, applicants, um, not just nonprofits, um, and uh, consider doing something for the, the general public as well. Okay, is there any more comments? And I, 
I, uh, it's, I think it should be beefed up. I'm in full uh, agreement. I just don't know that it needs to go to five or to four. I think right now we've agreed to spend $3 million of the money. And so uh, on the, on these programs and we just opened it up to nonprofits. I still think at this point, we need to try to stay within our $3 million. If we open it up to nonprofits, then we're probably going to get with the, the uh, participation we've gotten so far somewhere around that 750 mark, which would be probably about $4,000 a piece, but I truly don't care. I think that it's going to qualify to move forward. And so we could, we could go to 5,000 like Commissioner Rawls. I just want to make sure that we don't give the second tranche of, of people or the second tranche of money a, a, an opportunity to get 5,000 where the first bunch only was able to get 3,000 now that we've seen what the participation levels were. I'm, I'm actually included the, the, the first bunch I, because of the checks that I've been cut. I know you were, uh, J, uh, Commissioner Rawls, and I agree with that. I just, I don't know that, uh, I'm, I'm just not sure if we can do that yet. I need uh, Julianne and Rich to get together and probably widow Brian and find out, can we automatically just go ahead and raise the, the amount that they've applied for to four or 5,000 or whatever, instead of like making them reapply after the three. That's the only question I have. And, uh, and if they did, and if we can't do that, then fine. I think we need to let them reapply for another one or two or whatever, where they're even with the first one. I'm in complete total agreement at this point that we need to go up because of the amount of participation that we're getting. I know that a lot of people talked to me and said it wasn't worth $3,000 for everything that had to go through and the justification at the end and what have you. Might be worth it for four, might be worth it for five. So I don't really have a problem there as long as we can uh, use the CARES Act for what it was intended for partially for businesses, partially for, uh, I think, nonprofit fit. I think the elderly fits, just like Commissioner Rawls just said. I've been a proponent of that since day one uh, at some level. Uh, but I think we're also going to have to uh, take some of the money to make the county whole um, at the end, at least a piece of it at the top or something. And to be quite frank with you, it's, se it's September the 8th. We've gotten about two months or so to spend this money or we're not, or it just goes back to the government. So guys, uh, I think we need to consider right now that some of this CARES Act money is going to go back to make the county whole. It's going to make the sheriff's department whole, us whole. Um, I think the uh, municipalities have sent in requests from several municipalities at different levels. Um, I still think we have plenty of money left in there to have all these programs that we're talking about doing right now and to have them included for the business of nonprofits and for the public. But uh, if we don't uh, if we don't take some of this CARES Act money and then we end up sending it back, we're gonna be crippled uh, around here in our budgeting. So I think that we need to just go ahead and let staff plan on trying to work some of that in along with these other programs. It's obviously not as easy to get these things moving as we thought that it would be when we did, when we started this back at the 1st of uh, August, I believe it was, and we figured we were gonna close it out on the 25th and all the money was gonna be gone, we were gonna find some more. So it's not as easy getting it out there as we're thinking that it is. So uh, if we could come up with a with an amount um, at this point, I think that's where we should possibly start. Uh, so Commissioner Rawls, would you, uh, would you be, amenable to the 4,000 at this time, or do you want to try to go for the five? Cause that's going to put us down to 600 at five or 750 at a, at a four, which, what do I, you think we ought to try? I, I'd, I'd say 4,000 is fine now, but if, if we go another couple of weeks and we don't see an uptick, we can always s send out another check to the people. Um, if we decide to go to 5,000, um, nobody's going to complain that they got two checks in the mail. I promise you that. Okay. <laughs> Would you make that motion, the 4,000? Sure. Um, I make a motion that we increase the uh, amount per recipient to $4,000 um, effective now. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Uh, Commissioner that's Harvey. Uh, so clarification, have, that's, that's, that includes retroactive for the people that have applied up till now. Okay, thank I understand. You. I, I, <laughs> that was my first comment. I, I, know I agree and took it like that, Commissioner Rawls. So, yeah. uh, so 
we're going to increase the amounts from 3,000 to 4,000 and try and, and including the uh, first tranche of money that's going to be for the first tranche that was uh, applied for. Um, and that was seconded by Commissioner Harvey. Um, is there anybody, uh, any other additional comments on that before we vote, Commissioner Pickens? And that, is that including nonprofits now? Yes, sir. Okay. I, that's my most, that's what I considered the motion. That was original people, uh, new people, anybody that puts in nonprofits are also included at a rate of 4,000. Okay. In the, okay. And uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Ayes have it, motion carries. Okay, Julianne, have you- Can uh, I ask a question quick on that? Yeah, go Please. ahead, Commissioner. What do we respond to people when they ask us? Because I'm getting asked every day when the checks are going out. Well, I'm hoping to have that. Uh, Miss Young answer that right now. <laughs> yes, sir. Commissioner Rawls, if you have somebody, you're welcome to send them directly to me. Like I said, this week, we're going to have two staff members at least dedicated to calling those who are application eligible, i.e. ready for the check. Um, and then additionally calling those who need to turn in applications. But please forward anybody who's uh, got a question about where they are in the status directly to me. And if they're ready, then it'll be real easy for me to say, come by and sign your paperwork to get your check. Oh, so they, if, if they're application eligible, they have to, they have to physically show up and sign an application? No, they can email it. We can email it back and forth. They can sign okay. it electronically, email it back to me. I'm not, I'm, so are we are we emailing these other people right now saying, hey, you're eligible, sign this and send it back to your check it's cut? We haven't begun that process. We wanted to get concurrence from you all today, but yes, sir, starting tomorrow, we're reaching okay. out to those eligible applicants um, to get them. They We can do however they want. Some people have honestly preferred to come in person even to submit their application. So we certainly won't assume that everybody wants it emailed. Um, we'll do whatever the applicant would like done. Okay. Uh, if you'll, can you send me a list of just the applicant eligibles? Maybe give us a, an updated list. Sure. Uh, so if they call us, I can say, look, you're, you're on it. Go in. Absolutely. I'll send that out right now. All right. Thank you. Sure. I'd like, I'd like a copy too, Ms. Young. Yeah, I'll, I'll so. Yes, sir. I'll send it to all of the commission. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. So, uh, I think the, uh, I think we've talked about item A, and I think we know in detail, and I think Ms. Young has enough uh, enough direction at this point on item A and on item B, which is the allocation of remaining funds. I, uh, I touched base on that earlier. Uh, I think that we're gonna, uh, as far as the uh, allocation, I think that some of it's gonna have to go to the municipalities and some of it's gonna have to go to the uh, constitutionals that have requested it. And so, I think that we just need to come up with an amount of money that uh, that we're willing to put towards that direction. Uh, Miss Young, uh, what are what are the requests from the constitutionals and the uh, at this point and the uh, and the municipalities as far as dollar wise? Um, sir, I, I don't have the total broken down by just constitutionals. If you'll look at your the spreadsheet you were given, there's constitutionals, internal departments. Um, municipalities and other court administration, Department of Health, that kind of thing. But total in request, there's a total request of $3.9 million, of which we believe 221 would be FEMA eligible, meaning that those particular agencies would bear the burden of applying to FEMA first. And that, that number is using the most conservative guidance that FEMA has released to date. So that number actually could get better, but you you should not expect it to get worse um okay. and so that would leave a potential of 3.7 if everything requested is approved um, as an eligible expense and we kind of have paused that review because we don't want to incur consultant staff time in reviewing each of these requests until we understand the direction from the bocc so I am not at all saying every single dollar of this would apply to CARES and would be eligible, but that's the request made by those agencies at this time. Okay, so if the board voted at this time to give to direct $4 million of the $13.3 million in CARES Act funding to the municipal and constitutional uh, request, then at that point we would run it through our consultant. <clears throat> 
see what would and would not fit under the program and the rest of the money we would still have and that would still leave us million several million dollars to be able to go through having a senior program or a a um a type of that type of a situation so at this time we've had four million dollars in requests basically yes sir that's correct okay uh commissioner harvey thank you mr chairman i think now's the time that we we do filter it through widow brian the 3.7 million dollars that's on our agenda packet today um and then i think we submit the plan to fema i mean not fema but the dem because at the beginning of the cares act talk was the fact that we we don't have 3.7 million uh other than what we have in reserves so we have some money of the 3.2 million left but truly we don't have the 3.7 in in totality. So I think we could submit a plan and then we could take money out of reserves if they approve the plan, or maybe they would advance funding to us because that conversation has happened with them and they are considering that. Um, so I think that's what we do is filter it through with O'Brien and say then send it up to DEM. These are the requests that are made and um, we request advanced funding because we don't want to dip into our reserves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, that sounds like very good advice, Commissioner Harvey, Commissioner Rawls. I, I agree with Commissioner Harvey, but um, <clears throat> I'd like to see some of the backup documentation on this. I'm looking at this one that jumps out of me, IT infrastructure. How did we spend $200,000 on IT infrastructure because of COVID? Hey, Commissioner, and, and I'm sorry, I should have said this. This is both realized and projected costs in order um, to make things operate through December. So some of these, well, many of these items have not been procured or purchased or expensed. They would be a plan. So some of those IT expenditures would be additional servers, servers, networking, um, things that make our virtual workspace since we are, are forced into that and it's an eligible COVID expense. Um, you know, our Zoom memberships, things of that nature that we've had to have in order to operate. And then some that would enhance our ability to operate virtually through December um, in relation to, so CARES or COVID also uh, has an expectation that you cover your virtual workforce who may be in quarantine and or be sick with COVID and have the ability to um, re-engage them in, in employment. Um, and so some of these items are related to additional laptops for those virtual work scenarios. Some of them are related to just that virtual work um, environment that we have in operation today. But if you would like, I have the detail behind every one of these submissions and I can prepare that or email it to you, whichever you prefer. And you can see basically a summary how it applies or how it's helping um, the the entity to operate or agency to operate during this time period and, and what it would be used for. And again, some of those expenditures have not been made. They were waiting for um, the commission to give them an idea as to whether or not they were going to allow them to make it. There's also some additional funding that we're being made aware of. Um, specifically, the HAVA funding was the most recently, and it's specifically for your supervisor of elections office. However, it does in, in incorporate a county match, but your county match can be your CARES fund. So, i.e., with HAVA funding, it would, I believe our allotment is close to $120,000, which would almost cover your entire supervisor of elections need, and we would only have a 20% match of that, and our 20% could be covered by CARES. So, if we took 20,000 of CARES, we could get 100,000 in HAVA funding for the supervisor of elections to do the enhancements needed. So there are additional funding mechanisms that we're looking at how to maximize the award and the funding ability so that we can help everybody's resources. But I have all of that documentation and all the backup for each one of these requests. So I'm, I'm confused because it says on the, the SOE, consider using HAVA funding um, so, well, the confusion, the HAVA funding is just being made available. 
Um, and frankly, all of the guidelines and, and program rules are not all clear at this time as most federal funding becomes. And so it's something we're looking at in addition to all other, as you'll see on the notes, you're seeing a, a note to look at DOJ funding. Mm -hmm. So anything that the <clears throat> uh, widow Brian, our consultant, knew about supplemental funding that would aid us in recovery for these agencies. We're looking into that at this time, in addition to what we can supply them with CARES. I, I, so I guess what I'm, what I'm concerned about is that if, are we taking action on this today or is, is this just for informational purposes? Because it sounds like you want us to take more action. Direction. Well, the action, the action that we're gonna have to take is there's been some comments that none of the CARES Act money should go to the public. So, I mean, should, excuse me, should go to anybody but the public. The problem is we can't give it to the public between now and December 1st. We've been trying and I, I'm convinced we can't do it. And so what, what I'm saying is we need to take some of this money and make the county whole again along with our public programs that we're doing. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I asked for this detailed breakdown last Thursday and uh, Julianne's been off and, and that's okay. But I think we need to be very, very careful and this is what I'm going to say. I think before we start getting this list and before every commissioner starts chopping, chopping, questioning, questioning, public questioning, I think we need to let Widow O'Brien filter it first. And then, then we'll know the number that we can come back to. Because somebody gets a hold of this, starts raising all kinds of cane, if you will, and all of a sudden nobody feels comfortable and going ahead with any design, with any number. I just really want this to go filter through Widow O'Brien before we start cutting and hacking and dissecting this, this, this list. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for those comments. I believe that's exactly what we're trying to do this afternoon. <laughs> Commissioner Harvey has just approved staff to move forward with Widow O'Brien on these issues instead of us moving and having, and instead of them moving forward, and then we decide that we don't want to do what we're, what we just decided to do. I think what we just decided to do, which was take a portion of this and make the county whole. How much, how, and the constitutionals and the municipalities, but we don't know how much until it gets through with O'Brien and then that's sent up to Tallahassee. So Correct. That's, that's where I'd, uh, I'd like to uh, move it forward and Commissioner uh, Rawls, uh, I think you know that you're welcome to any information you want. All you have to do is contact Ms. Young, but she does, if she doesn't know what it is because she's projected or, or did her best estimate at this time, that, that's not available, but she can she explain to you where she got it from. So well, I, I agree with Commissioner Harvey. I think I'm willing to wait and let, let this, let, let whatever Ryan go through it and, um, uh, see what's eligible, what's not, and then give back to us, you know, because obviously this is in the public domain. Um, they will be looking at this as well, and it'll be less ex ex explanation I have to do later on. So um, I'll, I'll wait and see what they come back with. Okay, good deal. Um, Thank you. Uh, Ms. Young, do you need anything else on items A or B? Are you good? Yeah. You say no, sir? No, sir, I'm good. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to item C then. I think that's Matt. You're muted, Matt. Item B, yes, sir. The allocation of the remaining available funds in the general fund. Those are item C, proposed capital for final budget. We haven't done B yet, allocation of remaining available. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. Back no, up sir. to B then, yes, sir. Okay, so <clears throat> with um, 5.05 p.m. tonight being the tentative budget, um, we'll have uh, obviously one more chance to make allocations in the budget before the final reading on the 22nd. Within the tentative budget, um, there is uh, right at 800,000 available, 798,687 that are recurring funds um, available annually that can be reallocated to uh, any remaining items that we haven't been able to fund yet. Obviously, one of those is the sheriff's request. They requested an increase of 1530231 
Um, the report out of the Fire Rescue Committee recommended additional $819,219 in estimated salaries and benefits, which part of those could be funded from the fire fund, which also has available um, recurring annual funds in it of about 350,000. Uh, but I just basically want to have the commission um, uh, give me direction on, on where that, um, that 798,000 in the general fund should be allocated, whether it's to leave it in reserves or discuss any, any of these other options uh, like the sheriff or the fire rescue committee. Uh, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't mind starting it off. I think, uh, you know, I think the fire service committee did a wonderful job. I'm not so sure we can go ahead and bite that whole bite of the apple uh, this coming budget year. I think we need to plan for it next year and definitely look at trying to implement as much of that as we can. So I'll just say that. I think it's very important to make the sheriff's department whole. I've had numerous conversations with the sheriff and the under sheriff, and they feel like this is the last year that they're going to have to play catch up on, on past administrations. Um, so they look at a nominal <clears throat> rate increase next year and from the subsequent years after that. But they do have a carryover of about 600,000 in fleet cars that they, they couldn't purchase this year. So they do need to get that money back because that's a PO that's outstanding. But Matt, I have a couple of questions for you and you and I've already talked about it, so I'm not catching you off guard. But we we budgeted for 95% of our ad valorem and um, expected ad valorem. And if that number goes up 2%, that's another 716,000. If it goes up another, it goes up to 3%, it's a million dollars. Um, I asked you the other day, you know, when will we see that coming in? So I'm not going to put words in your mouth. I'll let you speak to that because I think historically we've always, we've come in over the 95%. And I think that's some money that even though we're talking about this money, this 700,000, uh, we could be talking a lot, you know, another 700,000. So, and then I have another question for you, Matt, before I, I let you go. Um, yes, sir. And, and I, I recall us discussing that the other day. The, the issue is that, and I'm looking it up right now to see what our ad valorem taxes are at this year. Um, but the, the thing about that is, is that's just a, a one time. So looking at next year's budget, it's really what we're estimating on all revenues coming in on a yearly basis. So the 798 that we have available to allocate is just recurring revenues each and every year. If we got uh, some extra revenues this year, which we did, it looks like ad valorem was about $509,000 more than we budgeted. But I have to look at my budget to see what I projected that we were going to collect. Okay, I estimated, I estimated the budgeted amount. So it is extra that, you know, an additional 500 and really $10,000 in ad valorem taxes this year. But that's a one-time revenue you know if if there was something one time that we could spend that on then there's no problem using that money for those one-time expenditures what where you run into trouble is is when you're allocating more for recurring costs when you're not going to have that revenue come in the following year Matt, Matt, i understand yeah. i understand that but the question on the table is the sheriff and the under sheriff have already committed that next budget year, they're not going to see such an increase because they've been playing catch up. So with that in mind, I'm not so concerned about the reoccurring because the, it's going to drop the expenses and the income part of that. So I'm not too concerned about that with them. Uh, they've committed to me that they want to make this thing whole. They've committed they want to cut down these high, these high increases that they're seeing, but they need to play catch up and they have some issues that they need to do. So I think we're fully in our rights to not have to dip into reserves, but say, you know, there's some money here that came in and we're going to be able to allocate it to the sheriff's department and give them, make them whole. And then next year, we're going to have to be very lean. 
we're going to have to stay within that because we don't know if we're going to see increases because we budgeted at 95%. Matt, the other thing I want to talk to you about is our departments that we that we talked about the other day. There's going to be some unbudgeted monies that are going to be coming back into our budget. And um, I know we're here at the at the end of our month is the end of the fiscal year. We won't really know that, but we all know there's going to be some money that comes back. So do you have any idea what that magic number would look like right there? Uh, again, no, sir. That, that requires a lot more than just looking at one individual line item because there's so many different line items. I would have to look at both my budget file and what I projected to carry forward in the next year versus where expenses are at as of, you know, September 8th, today's date. And, you know, there'll still be some expenditures that go out by September 30th. So that's kind of a always uh, like a moving target. Ad is a lot easier because all of Ad Valorum is already in so far this year. So, um, but yeah, there it, it's, that one would be tough to say how much that funding really is. It would, it would take Thank me some you. time to, to look that up. I understand that, but we, and we won't know that for a couple months, probably down the road, but I, I think there's enough wiggle room there that we would not be, we wouldn't be committing to something reoccurring that isn't possibly already there. Uh, again, because the sheriff is looking for this last time fix to get his department whole, and then we won't see the increases anymore. So Mr. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity to speak to Matt about that. Okay, Commissioner Hart, did you have uh, comments, Commissioner Piggins? Um, talking on the lines that um, Commissioner Harvey's talking about, I, I believe I'm following him, that you're saying that the, that the, um, the extra money, say the $500,000, that would not be reoccurring next year for the sheriff. Is that what you're saying? Commissioner Harvey? Yes, sir. That's exactly what I'm saying. If, if we budgeted at 95 and we're seeing a $500,000 increase, the sheriff is wanting 1.5 million. That's 500,000 that we could divert to the sheriff's department because next year they're committed to not raising up the percentage. I think their percentage of increase had been somewhere around 17%. And please don't hold me to that number because that just popped in my head, but that's what I've been seeing, I think. But they're committed to an, an annual two to three, four percent increase from now on, starting next year, if they can get their their ship corrected at this time. So, by moving that five hundred thousand over to them, I think that helps out their budget process tremendously. And again, then it just be from then on, it's the same number. It, it, you won't see a you won't see that reoccurring all the time because they're playing catch up. We would still have to have that increase to be able to fund it perpetually, right? Because the dollar amount's, dollar amount's the same, I and mean, it's not gonna go down, it's gonna continue to go up. So I see where you're coming from, but I see if we if we don't get that extra, you know, $500,000 for whatever reason, then we're gonna have to fund it from somewhere else. You're correct. You're, you're Yeah, that's very correct. But they have, re they have really sold me on the fact that they didn't think that they needed to continue making these cost demands on us like they are okay. because of fleet, because of other things. Right. So, but we'll have to see when that time comes, you know, naturally. Mr. Rawls, you muted. Uh, I'd, I'd love it if Colonel Wells would chime in, but um, or actually, I, I, if, if Colonel Wells could talk on this, then I've got a question. Yeah, thank you, Jeff, because I was going to ask for Gator or Joe or somebody to chime in on this. Think, okay. Yeah, I think the uh, I think the sheriff's with us too, but I'll do the best I can, and then he may have to fill in any uh, any gaps if you have any questions. But I think you know that what Commissioner Harvey is speaking of. I think he speaks a lot of truth there in that. Yes, we had requested that 1.5 million increase, but in fact, that's only, we carried over 887,000 to us last year. So we're not actually to operate at 1.5 million more than last year, but we have to make up for that 887 as well. 
that is not we don't have to carry over this year or that's not already encumbered for and i think that and 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 i think that once we do this and i think uh, the sheriff had this conversation that once we get caught to where we need to be which is what the 1.5 would which is about six hundred thousand more than we operated last year then from here on out we would be in a good position to make our annual increases solely inflation based you know two three four percent at the most but uh it's just that in the year over year of, of us carrying over money to make ourselves whole and able to operate and that ability to carry that amount of money is is no longer present the only reason there's any carryover this year is because both Ford Motor Company and Chrysler Motor Company have shut their factories down due to COVID. Therefore, none of the fleet came in. So all that carryover you're seeing this year would not have been there had COVID not come along and shut down our auto fleet. So I don't know if that helps at all or not. And I'm sure the sheriff has something he wants to add to it. Well, I guess my question, Colonel, would be that if we um, if we use that portion of your current budget on capital expenditures, the, then uh, why are we trying to make those capital expenditures reoccurring expenditures for uh, for forthcoming years? I guess that's the part of it. I guess I'm not understanding. No, I, go ahead, Joe, or either way, it doesn't matter. I, I, well, my point on it is most of the capital is, is in vehicles and the fact that the, there's never, sh the way we have it organized, there should never be a vehicle for a year that a portion of our fleet should rotate every year in order to keep us current and keep us out of the position we're in now. But those rotation amounts will be a lot smaller because we won't be trying to catch up. So there is some there is some capital, if you're considering fleet capital, there is some fleet in there. Um, but I don't think, and the sheriff, he may have a different view, I don't think that that means we won't need to order any fleet next year. No, I think Joe's absolutely correct in his assertion that uh, the way that we budget for fleet vehicles is they're on a rotating basis, just as he uh, very eloquently explained a few minutes ago. Okay, thank so you. Do you have something else, Commissioner Rawls? Yeah, if if um, so you're not you're not going to roll part of your fleet out in 2020, but in 2021 you will, and that would have been what you would have rolled in 2020, correct? Well, with the requested increase in money, we would actually use the the budget that you give us for 21 right. to do our 21 fleet updates and our 20 fleet updates would come from the rollover that we're carrying. They should have already been here. They should already be on the street, right. but they just didn't come in. So we're in effect right now about four years behind on fleet. We should be three, but because these didn't come in, we're about four because we went Sheriff, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we bought any fleet at all, except for a few here and there since you've been here, right? Um, to make up where we had crashed cars or whatever. That's that's it, correct. It, it sounds to me like you're 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 one year behind the eight ball, if not more, on fleet, and then next year um, you're still going to be behind the eight ball. And at some point, it sounds like the, you know, you could have uh, the perfect storm again, to where you, you're you're going to be coming to us for more money. Um, simple math tells you if you have a 3% rate of inflation, you've got a $600,000 per year uptick, you know, and that's based on $20 million. Your budget's a little north of that. So I, I don't see how you guys can, can survive without having extra funding um, in your budget now and going forward. That's recurrent. I don't, I don't, I don't understand the logic. Um, I mean, how are you going to hold on to your workforce without being able to give them pay raises on a regular basis? And that's one of your major expenditures, correct? Yes, I think that it's reasonable to anticipate, though, that, uh, you know, with a, a three to four percent increase per year, uh, I think we can, uh, you know, we can reasonably make adjustments to our pay based on that. But that's that's over that's over six hundred thousand dollars a year. Correct. OK. So. It can be done. Oh, sorry. I thought you were done, sir. No, I, I just my, my 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 biggest question is: Are you guys comfortable with with the money that that if, if we roll back the money that you that you give us back back to you? Are y'all comfortable with the position that you're in right now with your budget? I'm I'm not sure that I understand the question. So the, roll. You you asked for 1.5 million. Now you're not. What is what is the current ask, if any? from the sheriff's department. The current ask is still at 1.53 million. In, in addition to what we can roll back to ourselves this year. Yes, because that will make our fleet whole for this current fiscal year. 
moving forward. And, and that's that's already spent. I, I don't know that I can cancel those POs once those cars have hit the manufacturing process. I mean, I guess probably we could, but this, this year's remaining money is in fact spent. If you take our cars out of it, we're actually projected right now to come in within about 75 brands of running out of money if you take our cars out of it. So that's all car money that's rolling over. Are you, and and uh, you're, you're committed on these expenditures on the vehicles already? Yes. Yes. Okay. So just for clarity in my mind, if we are not able to fund you any more than you already have, and if, if we don't give you anything towards that 1.5 million, what will be the net effect on, on your budget year? We're going to come back and see you in about May of next year until you are out of money. All right. Is there any other funding sources or any other um, sources of alternative revenue that you guys can think of that other communities are using to generate revenue to fund the, the sheriff's department at 100 percent? There's none that come to mind. I haven't had uh, haven't had those conversations with my counterparts in uh, in some of our surrounding counties. Um, I don't I don't know of any additional revenue sources that we could uh, that we could explore. And you guys are funded out of out of the uh, general fund, correct? Yes. That's, that's all I got. Hey, uh, I understand that from our previous uh, conversation that we just had with Miss Young that uh, the sheriff's department has turned in part of the uh, money to be uh, looked at by Widow Brian uh, as part of the expenses that may qualify. And I'm understanding that that would take the place of some of the budget requests that you've been asked that you've asked for. Um, if I'm looking correctly, it's one point five million dollars approximately that you've. Uh, to uh, turn in for possible CARES Act reimbursement or uh, money to be paid from the CARES Act as part of the municipal constitutional thing that we just said. So while I'm not saying that we don't fund you, I'm just saying that we kind of need to get find out what's going to be covered by CARES and we need to find out, um, you know, I, I asked personally for some information from the sheriff's department. I haven't received it yet, but in fairness, you guys, I didn't ask you direct. And so um, I asked uh, Miss Young to try to get it for me. And I'm sure that it's, she has, and it's just been a, a plug in the wrong direction from everybody. But I asked how much capital expenditures have been spent by the sheriff's department for the last three years. And I asked how many, how much money of the budget that was given to y'all were given to you for capital expenditures that were used for items other than those capital expenditures, which turned those capital expenditures into reoccurring expenses. So I think those were fair questions to ask, and I wasn't able to get that information back yet. I know that we've got to make a decision today on where we go, but uh, <clears throat> I think this commissioner would like at this point to uh, – to give you uh, to give you five hundred or six hundred thousand dollars of our remaining uh, budget money that we have, which is seven ninety eight or whatever it is, that we'll yep. give you uh, maybe even seven hundred of that money, which would leave us a little cushion in there, and uh, and and that we would do like last year, and that we would tell you that we will commit to give to rolling that money back to pay for your cars that's coming back at us, and then. Guys, quite frankly, go on through Wet O'Brien and see what they'll do. And then if we, it just because we don't do it right up front means it doesn't mean we can't do it through the year and try to make all this happen. But as you well know, it's not just the sheriff's department. We Once uh, Mr. Grimes gets on board and starts working on that, there's going to be some expense over on that side to try and do some of the, re, the uh, restructuring and reorganization in that department too. So, you know, all I'm kind of asking is, is that we try to take some of the heat off of you by, you know, committing to maybe 700,000 of the 798 that we got today and then uh, and seeing where we go with Widow O'Brien and, and telling you, guys, we'll be there for you. Um, we'll, I'll be, I got you back, Gator. <laughs> you know, I, I know that we'd rather do it up front and it's easier, but, you know, we, I think we've got to pass a balanced budget is what I think. Uh, Commissioner Rawls. I, I agree with everything you're saying. And I, I keep coming back to that, the fact that at some point we're going to have to have a conversation about generating new recurrent revenue that we're not able to generate right now. 
it, it can't come from ad valorem taxes fast enough for us to be able to sustain our departments. Um, you know, we're looking at, you just mentioned Chief Grimes and $800,000, and that's 10% of what the committee recommended. It's actually eight, eight million. So um, I really think that we should set aside some time in the near future as soon as possible to start taking a look at alternative funding sources going forward so we can fully fund our departments and not have to, you know, have this conversation where we're asking to, you know, take 700,000 and let's hope that, that this CARES Act money um, qualifies, you know, because if it does, and thank God we got hit by COVID because you get to fully fund your sheriff's department next year. But, you know, it, we can't run this county on, 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 on hope, hoping we get hit by a, a, a hurricane or a COVID or whatever. Um, I, I think we just really need to be a little more deliberate than that and, and forward funding, at least in my opinion. Mr. Harvey. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Rawls, I have spoken to Rich Commando and our association and we cannot do a, like an MSBU for for uh, the sheriff's department. It has to be run out of uh, ad valorem taxes. So, unfortunately, we're stuck on that, uh, and I have gotten that confirmation uh, about that. I, I I do agree. If I could take, not, like, not to cut you off, but if we were to, if we were to fund the fire service and not take that money out of MS, out of the general fund, that would loosen up money in the general fund that could be used for the sheriff's department. That's all I'm saying. I hear you. Thank you. You still have um, the floor, Commissioner Hart. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Matt, if I'm hearing you correctly, the $798,000 that we see in our agenda packet just increased another $500,000 on unexpected revenues that came in. Is that what I'm hearing you say? One, for one time. The, the 798 is, is recurring. So that that is estimated um, unless ad valorem tax of the tax base goes down next year but if the tax base stays the same or even goes up a little that number should hold the but 500 I'll, is just just one time i got it i got that and also mm -hmm. what i was hearing the sheriff and the under sheriff were talking about was that they won't have to buy so many fleet cars in this in the upcoming years so am i understanding that correctly colonel wells and sheriff deloach that well that is partially correct uh you know we have uh over the last three years deferred uh, our fleet purchases a number of times and we're just in a position where we unfortunately can't do that any longer um this year carrying over this money will allow us to bolster our fleet somewhat uh, but i think it would be irresponsible of me to say that we're where that we're where we need to be with fleet that there won't be some uh some unanticipated uh, purchases that we'll have to make in the future and and it's also I think the Supreme Court ruled on the Darnell versus Alachua County that you can spend your money within your budget, whether it be for capital or for whatever you need to spend it on. So from my understanding, is that correct? Well, that's partially clear. That case has actually gone to the uh, District Court of Appeals. Um, the uh, county has since filed a, uh, correct me if I'm uh, wrong here, Rich, but I think they filed a uh, writ of certiorari to the Florida Supreme Court for that case to be heard. And the oral arguments are coming up in that case on November 4th, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Thank you. My point is this is very clear. If we took 500,000 out of the 798, took another 500,000 out of the increase that was unexpected to come in above and beyond the 95% that was budgeted, that would put you at a million dollars. Now we just got to get you whole and maybe the CARES Act money could come through and help you on that. So would that be a, a compromise that the board would allow today? Well, thank uh, you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey. I still think that it wouldn't be a bad idea just to make them whole, let them go through the CARES Act process with Widow Brian. And if they get another $800,000 worth of stuff from that, then they've been funded for eight, their whole complete $1.5 million. Mm. We haven't committed all the money that we have in the, in our, in our monies and reserves to them and plus betting that money's going to come in that we don't have because we're exceeding the 95% budgeting capacity. So, Correct. you know, I just, I don't know that I'm willing to gamble on that at this point when 
if we can fund him and make sure that he's good for the first half of the year and maybe we could find out where we are at that point and if they went through with O'Brien and God, if they didn't, then I'll commit to him that that we'll do anything within our power to try to get him funded at that point. But if, if the CARES Act funding will give him a portion of or a good, good chunk of this budget increase, then, we'll, yeah, we'll have to deal with it again next year because it'll become reoccurring when it goes to him and the, and the CARES Act funding is non-reoccurring. But it'll get us through this budget year, and I think that's what we need to do one step at a time. Uh, Commissioner Pickett, did you have something, sir? Uh, I, well, I will. Um, yeah, I, I, I see both sides of this, uh, where Commissioner Harvey is and, and, um, and, and, and Commissioner Turner is if you're funding this up front, or you're guaranteeing that you're going to, we got their back and you're going to take care of them throughout the year, however we end up doing it. But I think it does make sense to be able to, you know, commit some money today and then it'll take him through, take the sheriff's department through a certain part of the year. And then you apply for the cares and see what we get back then and see how that shakes out and see what, what is left that we actually have to fund. Um, I agree with those comments, and I don't think I'm on a different side from Commissioner Harvey here. I don't. I think I'm trying to just get to the same spot that we're both trying to get to, maybe by taking a little different trail. Uh, right. You know, I, there's a lot of things that would happen if he came back in a few months. We would know how much of this extra money actually we got instead of what we're projecting that we may get. And so it takes all the guesswork out of it and it takes all the risk out of it. The biggest thing that we're gonna have is what we're gonna be able to fund or not fund next year, because we're actually uh, gonna fund part of this budget in the future with non-reoccurring monies possibly. And if that happens, then, uh, but at least we'll know what's going on if we just, that's why I kind of think we ought to let them have the 700 today and with that puts us a, a 98,000 within our budget, uh, within our zero sum budget without using reserves. Uh, worst case scenario, worst case scenario, if we don't have the additional monies come in that we're looking to come in, we could turn around at that point and fund them as a worst case scenario out of reserves. So I think the monies would be there and we could still back them up, um, but it, it takes the risk out of it for the county at this time. That's just my comments. Is there any other comments from a commissioner at this time? If not, we need to give Matt guidance. Commissioner Rawls, Commissioner Pickens, or either one of you. Commissioner Rawls, you're muted. I agree. I think I think we should give them everything that uh, we possibly can right now. Um, I personally don't like the fact that we're going to uh, use COVID to make up for the, the shortfall. I understand that um, it, it's going to cover some of our losses, but I, I I don't know personally how much money the Sheriff's Department could have expended on COVID-related response to get to $1.6 million. That, that to me just seems like a stretch. Um, you know, it was a little suspicious that they just happen to need almost 1.6 and there's we're pushing for 1.6, but, and it, it might be the, the old government way you know, when I was in the military, I asked for twice what you want because you're going to get half of what you asked for. Maybe, maybe that that's what we're doing here. But I think going forward, we do need to come up with um, meaningful ways to fund the county and not have to have this conversation every year because um, we do want to have uh, recurrent revenue, recurrent employees. We want employees that are, that are stable in the community, that stay in the community, and not just the sheriff's department and the fire department, but also at public works and parks and rec and all that. So. Um, you know, we're only talking about one uh, department here. Um, all of our departments have, that need the same consideration. So thank you. Commissioner Pickens. Yeah, Commissioner Rawls, I agree. I mean, it, it's not one department um, at all. You know, we could, if we had the money, we could be using it in each of our departments. So um, Gator, Joe, you want to comment on, on a particular proposal that, that, that may become a motion to, to give you 700 and and then you know you, we're going to fund you and see how the CARES Act uh, application shakes out and then look at that after a few months and we'll see how our budget is, is coming together or, or how our revenues are. I'll, uh, I'll chime in and let the sheriff close up for us with his thoughts. Um, first of all, um, no, I, I think that's generous and I appreciate it and I appreciate the position that the county's in. Um, I believe that you are all gentlemen of your word. And if we run into issues this year, we'll have you guys uh, to work, help us work through that. 
I also want to tell you that, um, you know, these these uh, COVID, as I the sheriff has tasked me with the COVID expenses, it's been something that, that um, I particularly, the sheriff and all of our staff have worked very closely with Ms. Young on. This amount of money that's presented in this COVID is basically an ideas and a research project at this point to see what we think may be eligible, how it may apply. It certainly um, may not be anywhere near this amount, um, but I will tell you that um, I'm much more comfortable today than I was when we started in the fact that you have uh, been generous with the 700,000. We'll continue to work closely with Julianne and the consultant and see where we get with CARES. And, um, uh, and I think this is a workable plan and I appreciate it. That's my take. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Matt, I really need to make sure that I'm on the right page. If you were to put this agenda item together today, would the first line say that there is 1.298687 instead of the 798? Based on the 500,000 that no. we saw an increase because the the 500 came in this fiscal year so the way the, the way financials work on the fiscal year is that basically we got the 500 this fiscal year it's going to carry forward in the next fiscal year as a cash balance forward which is basically our reserve figures so it's effectively going to come out of reserves the 500 will be coming out of out of reserves because it was it was a one-time it was kind of the settlement for this fiscal year at, you know at the end of this fiscal year on september 30th we'll have an excess of revenues we might have some savings on expenditures versus what we budgeted and that total amount is going to go to cash balance forward which is going to carry in the next fiscal year so you know I, I understand that and i appreciate that but i think the public doesn't understand that we only budget for 95 percent of our expected revenues in that account so we're expecting, I'm expecting those numbers to be higher. But when we say we're going to take it out of reserves in the future year, that, that makes the public think that we're spending our reserves when in fact, we're just spending the increase that we got. Um, you got more interest on your bank it's account. A, you get, it's a, yeah, it's a different fiscal yeah. year. Yeah, but it's it's just hard to know in any given year whether you're going to hit, you know, the 95 or higher than 95. Uh, I, yeah, I, but, I understand. But right now, call it what you want. It is an increase of 500,000. So it is 1.298687. Regardless whether we're gonna throw it into reserves, we're gonna say it was an overage on the income that came in because we're, we're mandated to budget at 95%. So, or not mandated, we're suggested to. It, we're, yeah, at least we were required to at least budget 95%. Yeah. But it, but so, it, Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. Go ahead, Commissioner Harper. No. So the ex the expectation is that you won't overspend your budget, but you could see more money coming in. Correct. That's my point here. So, yep. and for us to think, well, we're just going to throw it in reserves and spend reserves. No, we're we're actually spending the increase in money that came in over and above what we budgeted the revenues for. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey. I don't know if I agree with that analogy because if we were short of the 95% and we only got 93% of the projected budget figures, then we'd have had to take that money out of reserves to pay back, put it back in there. So yeah, if the extra money comes in, that's because you put a little money in reserves. And if you missed it, you have to take money out of reserve. That's why you have reserves. This year we were lucky and got a little extra in our reserve fund, but it still carries over into reserves. And we we spend money out of that. It's not like we don't use the reserves for things. We use it for unforeseen drainage and bridges and things that we don't know that's coming up in front of us. We use those those reserves. So it's not like it's going into a savings account for per se or whatever. <laughs> we're gonna use that money. And so I think we just need to be fiduciarily responsible as we possibly can. And so uh, with that, I, you know, uh, I think what we need to do is let everybody think about it for a minute because I need to take a little short break. So we're going to we're going to take like a 10 minute recess and try to come back at a five minutes to four.
time, uh, 355, we're going to reconvene this meeting. And uh, okay, Matt, well, let's try to bring this in for a landing here. So you need a motion by us to do what we were just discussing, if that's actually the thing of the board that we're going to give them the 700 and let them go through the CARES Act funding and and then um, and then come back when we get through the process and we'll revisit the situation and that we're going to commit to give them back the money that they've already got expended on the uh, invoices towards the uh, vehicles from this year that's going to move into next year when they give it back we're going to immediately let them have it back to cover their POs from this year. Um, is that what I heard the commission that wanted to do at the present time? Okay. I'm, I'm, good. I'm good with that. Okay, so it looks like, do we need a motion or by consensus, Matt? I don't think it has to be a motion, but I just want to make sure that it's, you know, it is very clear the direction that I have from the board. So it was, you know, as we discussed, is 700,000 with the 500 carry forward and then anything that hasn't been spent That's this year 700 period out of the 798 that we have left 700 of it we're going to give them this year and then out of that and then we're going to give them back the money that they've already expended on the capital expenditures for the vehicles and but they haven't come yet, over. So we're going to return okay. that straight we're going to commit to return that back to them at the end of the year and then after they go through the uh the process with widow Brian and see where we are on care act funding and what may or may not fit. Then we'll just come back and revisit it next year. And at that point okay. we should have a better idea of what the actual revenues are going to be possibly. Understood. I'm good with that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, if anybody's not good with that, could we talk about it? I think, Jeff, you okay with it for this? Okay, we got a consensus from everybody. I believe that that's how we're going to move forward, Matt. Okay. The uh, now, what have we covered as far as what you have on your uh, list here? If we could, we that was just B. B. That was just B. Yeah. Now we need to do uh, C. Okay. Um, Can we move into C. Is that going to take as long? You think? C is. Uh, Capital allocations. I know we've discussed capital allocations before, but I wanted to bring it back up again now that we had the fire rescue committee report. And you'll see on page 10 of the packet is general fund reserves. And so uh, taking and setting aside the 9.3 million that um, is what the board, the consensus of the board was uh, wanting to keep two months of reserves, which is the Government Finance Officers Association's recommend, recommended minimum. That left us, or it leaves us with approximately 3 million for next year. And everything that's in that top box um, under capital needs recommendation for emergency medical services, IT and general services, I tried to get as much uh, capital into that list as I could, um, especially that those items that were prioritized by the fire rescue committee. And um, it still leaves us with about 1.25 million in remaining reserves. Um, and I set that, uh, that amount aside uh, because of the actuary, actuarial report that has come in on the health insurance. And it looks like, um, you know, we might have some significant costs next year on our health and health insurance. It's not a for sure, but there were obviously claims that the actuary um, has seen that looks like it could cost quite quite a, a, a large amount. So I wanted to be sure to not spend all of the available reserves down to that amount. And so I'm just asking for some board discussion on um, on these capital items and actually there's a couple there's three more funds after that i did it with the fire fund as well on page 11 shows the available reserves of about 1.6 million um and and prioritizing uh what the fire rescue committee put in but again there's about three million dollars worth of capital that there's just not money for in the fire fund um the utility fund is on page 12. Matt, hello. Yep. Okay. I I, I agree that we need to fund the fire committee, but I think we need to uh, 
th to know that this money is available there. But and I think that the uh, new fire chief, when he gets here or whatever you're going to call his position, that he needs to be re responsible for what and how that, that they he uh, he along with the administrator Suggs re decides to rebuild and and bring as much of that in there itself. Uh, for instance, he may want. Uh, something different than a than a drafting point, or something different than a, a a refurbishment of a certain station, or whatever. So, <clears throat> I agree that we need to put the money in there that's available to him, but we just need to try not to get completely down in the weeds until uh, uh, till Jr. gets here. That that's correct, and I was gonna I was gonna say that I just hadn't got to that point yet. That any of these purchases, for example, like ambulance replacements, or e if we are to do EMS station refurbishments, it's gonna be at an amount that has to come back to the board, anyways, for for final approval. Um, so yes, I, I I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. Doesn't, doesn't it all, all also already say that um, that there's a possible that the um, that some of this may be paid for by CARES Act funds also or not? No. I have not seen what was submitted for EMS um, under that category. So there, of course, is that possibility as well. But with this is our really the last chance to make any changes because I'm going to have to bring forward our capital improvement plan, our five-year capital improvement plan on September 22nd, and that kind of sets it. It can always be amended later, um, but just moving forward in the next year to kind of set the tone, um, you know, our reserves have made it to the point where we do have some available reserves to allocate to some needed capital. So I just wanted to have that discussion. I'm good, with time. I'm good with you moving forward because every one of these items has got to come back to the board before it actually takes. Mm -hmm. them. And so, you know, I, I don't know how the other commissioners feel, but I'm going to try to speed this up just a hair if I can. And unless somebody has a problem with taking the capital items forward at this time to be revisited later, as long as they're still within the budgeted amounts, um, is that okay for everybody to move that one forward? Uh, thumbs up, Commissioner Harvey. Uh, uh, Commissioner Rawls, you're muted. I have a question. So, when you say we're going to bring it forward and discuss it at a later meeting, is this, are, are, we're going to include this in the budget right now and then um, finalize the budget and bring it up in, in next year's budget as, as necessary? Or what are we doing? I'm not clear what we're talking about. I foresee, Commissioner Rawls, I foresee any of these budget items that come through will come back to the board for approval and can be discussed at that time. But I also want to make it clear that when uh, the new fire director gets here, the fire and emergency director gets here, that if he decide that they can make some changes to this along with the administration and try to, uh, to, to uh, he may decide that he wants uh, that something else the committee recommended is a higher priority than what we have on the list. So while we've got to take this forward, it doesn't mean we can't amend it at any time next year when the plan gets put in place after Mr. Grimes arrives. So are we, my, my, my question, like the, the, the $3 million or the, the, the 1.7 million where we've got money in there um, for IT and for general services and EMS, um, that money is not gonna be allocated right now as it comes up in the year, we'll approve it. Is that what we're discussing? <laughs> Anything over 65,000 because that's the procurement threshold would have to come back in front of the board for approval. Some of the smaller items under general services like the roof, well, they're all roof replacements. Yeah. Those might fall you know, below the threshold, but those are things that are definitely needed to be done. Um, and we couldn't even get some of the larger items from general services down in the, the list below. So, but yes, any anything over 65 is... But Man, let's try if we can and, and even straighten that out any further. The first 25,000 can be done by the administrator. Correct. From, from 25 to 65 can be done by the chairman, chairman. and the administrator. Mm -hmm. But if that chairman doesn't wish to bring it back, I don't know that I've just spent a single item that I'm aware of this year that hit that even close to that threshold that you guys didn't see it. Um, so out of an abundance of caution, most of the time, the chairman will bring anything that back to the board with the exception of something that's absolutely been budgeted. So back to my original question, are we discussing 
leaving the leaving the money out for now, but if it comes up when it comes up next year, then we bring it up and fund it out of reserves. No, sir. reserves at twelve million. Or are we are we going to spend part of the twelve million now? Well, what if I'm understanding correctly, and Matt, if I get this wrong, please feel free to chime in. But if I'm understanding correctly, what we're actually doing here is we're presenting the capital plan. And the uh, and it's being funded out of additional reserves that Matt doesn't feel like is necessary to stay within the reserve guideline. And usually, because these are non-reoccurring expenses, we try to use them on a capital list from years to year. Um, so these are the the uh, the items that Matt feels like that can be used as a capital list with non-reoccurring monies but it's not gonna be spent until it comes back before the board again, unless it's beneath the uh, purchasing requirements. That's correct. It's gonna, it's gonna be included in the in the budget that we finalize. That's correct, yes, yes sir. That, that okay. amount of money, yes, yep. Commissioner Harvey. But it's not guaranteed. I mean, this is a no. fluid list. So That's the tax collector building roof might get off the list to go for something different at that point. We're not gonna be held lot held hostage to that list by itself. That's correct. It, it, that's it's just a tentative a, allocation, yep. A tentative allocation, yes. Thank you for that that uh, response, Matt. So, okay. are we good to move on, guys? Chair, I'd to have one to, to clarify, because I appreciate Commissioner Rawls' questions. Uh, they're also to clarify, so, but Matt, these are real dollars. Mm -hmm. These are real dollars that we have to, to spend on whichever one of these we choose is necessary or most important, correct? That, that is correct. We fund everything that's on these lists, but we do have real dollar amounts here that are stated, okay. Right, but another thing that we need to make sure is if you if you remember last year, Commissioner Pickens, we had a, a list of, I'm wanting to say it was millions and millions of dollars and we mm -hmm. ended up trying to pick some off the list with the money that we had available to spend as we went because we've got to make sure that we have enough reserves there to fix bridges that pop up we don't know about and to fix do uh, drainage issues that pop up that we don't know about. And so that, which is exactly what reserves are for, but this is just saying that we do have some money that can go towards these capital list items if the commission wishes to do it and it's, and it's budgeted at this time, but we get to revisit it again. Is that correct, Matt? Yes, sir. Okay. So if we can move on, are you good with C now, Matt? Yes, sir. Okay, how about D? D is, uh, I wanted to just bring this to the commission. This is just uh, informational. This is something that we've done in the past, which shows all of the changes from the last uh, budget that you guys saw in July. And this just kind of, it, it details any changes made to the budget, whether it's revenue adjustments or expenditure adjustments. Um, to the current budget that's going to be presented in less than an hour. Okay. All right. Well, that gets us through D unless there's any questions. How about E? Item E is uh, kind of what we briefly discussed earlier, which is changes to the fee schedule. So this is not necessarily related to the budget, but this is something that the county adopts each and every year for the that fiscal year. And um, so I reached out to all of the departments that had relevant uh, fees um, included in the fee schedule. And so the agenda item uh, summary kind of goes over those changes. I included the entire fee schedule um, just so the board could see it. Uh, you'll see this again on September 22nd, but I just wanted to give the board uh, a chance to discuss today at the workshop um, any of the proposed changes. So just real, real briefly, page 10 is actually a, a decrease. I believe the board's kind of discussed this before. I believe Mike Brown has brought this to the board where if somebody is submitting a rezoning and they're doing a land, uh, a future land map amendment at the same time, we're reducing the rezoning fee from 750 down to 350. So that's actually a, a, a savings. Um, on page 29 for animal control, uh, that addition is something that animal control has been charging. It just needed to be added to the fee schedule. Uh, pages 31 and 32 were changes to the proposed water and wastewater rates. That was something we kind of briefly discussed earlier on the barge port, but there's also other changes proposed in there. Um, 
Well, Matt, if you don't, if you don't mind, could we, uh, if we're going to hear this again on the 22nd, could we just take this as a uh, informational portion of the workshop yep. and let everybody study it? And we, and then if uh, anybody has any problems or changes, they can take it. We can take a look at it during that uh, time that it's brought before the commission on the 22nd. The, on the 22nd, it'll need to be finalized, but I think that we can make any changes to it at that meeting and I could um, amend um, the fee schedule. Uh, it'll just be attached to a resolution. So I think that would be fine, Rich, right? For them to be able to make changes at the meeting on the 22nd um, yeah. and still adopt the resolution. Yes, you can still make changes. Okay. Up. Okay, so if, uh, without any objection from commissioners, we'll study the fee schedules and discuss that on the 22nd and be prepared to discuss that on the 22nd as a uh, as an item. Um, and with Mr. that, uh, yes. Are we gonna be talking the parks and recreation fee? Because I don't mind waiting till the 22nd. I just wanna make sure that the committee had a chance to review this upcoming uh, cost increase. That chairman, Pick, I mean, Commissioner Pickens chairs. Right. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Pickens, would you like to try and make sure that goes before your committee, either by Zoom or something, about the increase in fees? Yeah, that's going to ask. And um, I was kind of surprised when I saw this because uh, I think it needs to go before them. I'm not questioning Kevin and any of his uh, suggestions because he's dealing with it day to day, but I would appreciate if we could uh, we'll try to set up something next in this week or or within the next couple of weeks to um, run this by the chairman of parks and recreation. Would you try to see that that happen, even if it's by virtual or whatever you need to? Yes, I will. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, the, uh, is that, is that fine? Commissioner uh, Harvey? Most definitely, sir. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go to G uh, the public works transfer 40,000 between accounts for uh, East Putnam Utility Fund. Uh, is, that, is that you, Julie? Oh, that, sir, um, that's public works um, is... Mr. Troxel. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Mike, uh, would you, Mr. Troxel, would you uh, chime in on that one, sir? Yes, sir, this is the, uh, we just want to move $40,000 from uh, the uh, reserve fund and utilities. Uh, to the repair and maintenance, we would need to get the rest of the our remote reader heads uh, that we use throughout the water water system. Uh, get 100 and, or 235 of them. That should finish up almost all of our uh, all of our uh, remote reader heads for our systems. Okay, so uh, we're good with that. And it's a budget item. All we got to do is change light item funds. Is that correct, Matt? That's correct. So it would just come out of contingency. Okay. That's so right. that, that'll go on the uh, consent agenda for the uh, 22nd meeting, correct? Um, you, you could actually approve it at this meeting. I think that's the request is to get it approved at this meeting, correct, Mr. Troxel, so you can get those ordered before September 30th or? Yeah, that uh, we need to get them ordered before then. So yes. And it is a budgeted item that we were looking for. And so it's just basically changing funds where from one account to the other. Correct. It's it's over the, the limit that the county administrator has the ability to approve. So that's why it's on the agenda. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes. I move approval of the transfer of this money from contingency line to the R M line to purchase these R F meter heads within within the East Palak utility fund. I'll second it. Do we have a uh, motion by Commissioner Harvey and a second by Commissioner Pickens that we transfer this money for this use? Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Um, public works item H. Yes, sir. This is for us again. This is the Safe Routes to School program. Uh, Basically, what we're looking at is request the board's review of the uh, the lap agreement uh, for our role of public works and administrative capacity during the design of this uh, this sidewalk. It's uh, we don't need uh, we just need uh, board's approval for that. Okay. 
What is the position of the board? Mr. Chairman, I move approval. Second. Okay, we have a, a move of a motion to approve by Commissioner Harvey and a second by Commissioner Rawls. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, and the next one is another item for public works. Uh, item L, Mr. Troxel. Yeah, this, uh, this is uh, part of the horse landing, LC drive septic to sewer uh, program. Uh, this actually closed out last year, but since it closed out, we had a couple uh, invoices that came in. So what we've talked with everybody and we just need to extend that agreement to the end of September so that we can go through and uh, and then get our reimbursements, a, bit, a little over $100,000 that we can get reimbursed if we, uh, if we agree to extend it to September uh, 22nd. That's a real hard one, Mr. Chairman. I move approval. <laughs> second. <laughs> we have a motion by Commissioner Harvey and a second by Commissioner Rawls to uh, move this item forward. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Okay. Um, next, we're going to item going to go to item J, um, which are is the uh, committee. And uh, before I ask for each commissioner's nominations, I'd like to uh, make a comment, if I may. Um, <clears throat> along the lines of this morning, I agree with uh, Commissioner Rawls that it, that uh, that it needs to be revisited after giving it a lot of thought. I think it needs to be revisited after the committee does their work. Um, I think that uh, it's too late to put it on the ballot at this time, uh, even though I don't know if I would or would not change my mind about that because I think we can deal with it on our own. I just think we need to deal with it in a uh, very concise and very respectful manner. Um, I. Uh, after the committee makes their selection or their recommendation mm -hmm. at that time, then uh, it's going to come back to the board. And, uh, and I'm just going to say at this time that, that when the committee makes a recommendation, because it can't be done until then, um, of where it's going to go, uh, this commissioner is not going to vote for them to move that statue a single inch until they come up with the money and it's in an account and it's already uh, and it's already uh, uh, completely ready to move, and uh, the engineering can then be done, and the uh, and wherever the commission to voted on can, could be done. Um, I don't know that they'll be able to raise the money to uh, move that statue, but that's my only personal requirement: is that it isn't moved an inch until the money is put in a bank somewhere, where. Uh, after the commit after the recommendation from the committee comes through um when i when i voted to do this i voted it because i was trying to unify the community and i think what i ended up doing was i drove a wedge between them uh, the biggest wedge i've ever seen in my time in this uh in this business um i uh I don't. I don't think that uh, that, that was the intention of any commissioner to draw that, to uh, drive that wedge. I think that uh, that it just wasn't, and it certainly wasn't the intention of this commissioner. So, like I said before, I I think that uh, it would be best to move forward with the committee, get a recommendation. That way, they could maybe get the uh, the uh, amount of money that it would be cost, or at least an approximate amount of money it would cost to move it. But unless uh, unless things change and they come up with the money, like I said, I'm not in favor of putting any public money in this project at all, at all. And uh, and and I'm not going to vote to to uh, to come up with a uh, a place to put it, other than for an for an uh, an approximate amount of money it would take to move it. But even then, I want to reserve the right to change my mind and not move it at all. Um, and so that that's just how I feel. And so at this time, uh, I'm going to allow any other commissioner to chime in if they'd like to on this. And uh, then I'm going to ask for your uh, for your committee recommendations if you think we need a committee at all at this point. Commissioner Harvey. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, when we made the motion, it was very, uh, very 
concern that the, the monument was not to be moved until all these things happened. So you're exactly right. And um, let's just move forward. Thank you, sir. Okay. Is there any other commissioners that would like to uh, comment before I um, ask for your choices? Commissioner Pickens? Yeah, I think I agree with um, Commissioner Harvey. I think we need to, we, you know, we made the, it was a motion was made and it was seconded to, you know, to, to, to uh, relocate um, if the money is raised and, and we're going to form a committee. So I think we need to form that committee so they can research where that location could be. Um, and then we probably ought to figure out if we're, they're going to be tasked with coming up with the, uh, the estimate of, of how much it's going to cost and, and those things also. They probably need a scope of what this committee is actually going to have to do. But I think we need to, to move forward with the committee um, so they can do their work. So that part will be done if and when uh, money's Mr. Pickens, I'll set this. Commissioner Goddard, go ahead, sir. Well, I, I agree with all of you, <clears throat> but I, I think that the cost will be, you know, indicative of where we decide to move it. Uh, that, that to me is a major part of it. First off is where to move this, and then we can come up with what it's going to cost for engineering and cost and then move forward from there. Okay, um, I uh, I totally agree with all those comments. Like I said, I just want uh, everybody to understand that I reserve the right at, at any point to just completely change my mind and get out of it whatsoever. Um, the uh, I don't uh, I didn't realize the the uh, that I was going to drive community members one against the other. I knew that it was going to be a polarizing issue, but I had no idea that it was going to be this polarizing. And uh, so, yes, I'll stand by my last vote and I'll form the committee with your recommendations of who you want on it. And, uh, and we'll take it from there and then we'll have a discussion on just exactly what rules will come out of committee. Uh, <clears throat> I'll, uh, the main thing that I want to discuss here today is how the committee is going to set up to be. Unless commissioner has a problem, I'm going to ask, I have uh, approached Jim Troiano and ask him would he moderate this committee as a non-voting member and like we did the fire services committee instead of them going in there and trying to elect a chairman, but uh, try to come up with a report and actually moderate the committee. So uh, that uh, unless there's a commissioner that has a problem with that issue or what have you, that's how we're going to move forward. Um, the uh, at this time I'm going to uh, go down the uh, by commissioners by districts and I'm going to ask for your appointment uh, district run where all the equipment is uh, Mr. Commissioner Bill Pickens what are your appointments? <laughs> um, my two appointments um, first one would be um, Cherie Register and then my second appointment would be uh, Miss Mary Ann Braddock. Okay district two uh, Mary Reese, M-E-R-I, last name R-E-E-S, <clears throat> and uh, Lorraine Carr, C-A-R-R. -R. Okay, uh, District 3, um, uh, the uh, my uh, three appointments are going to be um, Leota Wilkinson, um, Danny Burns, and Miss Cynthia Asia. District four. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My two appointments are David Wade and Latoya Robinson. District five. Uh, Mr. Joe Wells and Miss Stella Brown. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, take these names and, and uh, officially form this committee at this time with the, the uh, recommended or the nominated names from um, all the commissioners. I thank you for putting that time in to helping us select a diverse committee to uh, move forward. I'm going to uh, ask that those names be presented to uh, Mr. Troiano and that he go from there trying to put a, his first meeting together at his earliest 
uh, opportunity and um, and then uh, bring us a report at his earliest opportunity with with uh, at least a couple of different recommendations um, three if if they can come up with three uh, commissioner harvey did you have a comment sir i do thank you mr chairman commissioner pickens mentioned the scope of work um, are we wanting to include that now or or let them come back with their what they see as a scope of work and i'm sure this committee will be in the sunshine and the open government law is that correct I would certainly assume, is that not correct, Rich, with an advisory committee, they're in the sunshine, correct? They are, sir. Okay, so yes, sir, they would be in the sunshine, uh, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you. And are we gonna let them do the scope of work and bring it back to us for approval and fine, fine tuning, or how's that gonna work? That's That would be my recommendation at this point. If they get hung up, then we can chime in on the 22nd if it's not over by then. Um, and, you know, I don't know how long it's going to take them to make a decision, but I'd like for them to come up with it. I think we laid out in the original motion pretty much what we wanted them to do, which was uh, – which was basically come up with recommendations. And I know that Commissioner Pickens made it explicit that it came back to the board to uh, take those recommendations and move from that point forward. So uh, anyhow, the uh, and, unless something's changed, I don't know unless you have some portion you'd like to add, uh, Commissioner Harvey, uh, we'll, we'll take it, uh, let Mr. Triano take it from there with his committee. Yes, sir. I, I just hope the committee takes their time and honestly just looks at every venue that they can possibly look at and be open-minded. And if it takes a few months, if it takes a longer, I want a good product when they're done. That's that's the only thing I would request. Yes, sir, I, uh, I don't disagree with you whatsoever. I think that, um, that we want the best product to come out of them we can. I'm not trying to rush them or whatever. I think that, uh, and this was going to be in my closing comments, and I think this is pretty close to my closing comments. Um, I think that at some point that the uh, commission, once they get a location of the possibility of where it may or may not ever be moved to, I think this commission needs to also set a date certain that they need to come up with that money by uh, or whatever, where it doesn't drag out for 15 years from now, someone comes up and writes a check. That's not the deal. I think there needs to be a date certain that the deal goes on to there or the deal's over with. Um, I'm not saying it's got to be 30 days or something silly, but it's got to be something reasonable on all sides. Um, and then uh, Commissioner Pickens. Yeah, so the when I I probably got you know out of line just a little bit about the scope of work. So I guess the, when I talked to the my two nominees, it was to find the place to uh, relocate it. So that's what their task will be for this. And then we'll look at once that is determined and then, and then where do we come up, who comes up with the amount of money that or an estimate of, of, of what it's going to cost to, to move it to that location. Would Julianne do that? Or will we ask this committee for, to do that task also? I don't think the committee needs to do that, Commissioner. I think that what needs to happen is they need to make their recommendations and then we'll bring it back at that point and have somebody try and give us some kind of an et some type of a budget estimate. Um, right. rather, I'm good with that. They just do the where it might, where the possibilities of where it might be relocated. I'm yes, sir, and, and bring those possibilities back to the board for a vote yep. and to do with those possibilities what the board wishes for them to do. Um, and then at a, and, and then at least they'll have an idea of approximately how much it'll cost to move the statue. And they may use comparative issues. For instance, the, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, the one in St. Augustine I read in the record was $250,000 to move it. And so I, uh, you know, if we use comparative records then that may be, it, it may be something that makes this one different or whatever. I just need everybody to understand this isn't going to be a twenty, thirty thousand dollar deal. Shoot, the engineering will cost more than that to move it. So you know it's not going to be write a check for a few hundred dollars, and the statue is going to show up at some other location. It's just not going to happen. Um, this is going to be some serious money that's going to have to be raised, and it's going to have to be by the public, or this commissioner is not voting for it. So uh, 
I just trying to get that as straight as I possibly can. So, uh, anyhow, um, well, again, Mr. Chairman, that was part of the motion. So it's not going to happen. So. Yes, sir. I, I understand completely, Mr. Harvey, but it sure isn't what's on the street right now. It's that we're going to move the statue. We're not moving that statue. The number one, the motion said it had to be through private money. I need to completely keep saying that it had to be through private money. And uh, that's only if they can raise it. And it's not in this commissioner is not going to uh, move it an inch until that private money that once it's been determined how approximately how much it's going to be is in the bank, not promised. So uh, agree. Okay. So with that being said, I, uh, I'm going to hereby form that committee that was a vote that the commission asked me to form using those uh, people. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to move to commissioner requests and I'm going to start with commissioner Rawls. Sir, are we, are we not going to discuss the uh, insurance? No, sir. This morning we voted to, uh, let them decide what they, if, if they needed to bring it back, that we were supposed to look at the second, at the, uh, at the new information that was presented this morning on the current reinsurer. Uh, Matt, you trying to talk, pal? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir. I, 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 won't, I was going to give an update at the end of the meeting once you guys got done discussing, but um, got word today that the Sun Life proposal, we have until the end of the week to, um, to make a decision on, on that specific proposal. So I would recommend that we try to have a special meeting one day uh, this week, uh, Friday again is September 11th. All the commissioners will be here. I believe that that um, is usually starts at 10, I think. It's starting at um, 59. Starts at 9? Okay. 59. It's 10 o'clock. Yeah. Right. It's just before 10. Okay. But um, if everybody would be here Friday, you know, we could, we could do it on that day. Well, we could do, we could do a zoom call whenever, or we could do that here Friday. And, um, oh, wait, oh, can I ask a question real quick? You said we have to approve this by Friday. If no, no. no, let me, let me help Matt out here a little. It does not have to be approved by Friday, but if we're going to use sun right. as one of them, it's got to be approved by Friday afternoon. Well, we meet tomorrow. Well, I'm okay. It's Thursday. Good. Um, I'm okay with time. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be in here anyhow. I could, we can set up a zoom call for, uh, uh, commissioner Pickens. Would you be available for a zoom call tomorrow morning at nine 30? Yeah, it'd have to be, I'd have to zoom from Crescent city, but, but I've done that before. So yeah, I can do that. Uh, Commissioner uh, Harvey, would you be available at nine 30 in the morning for a zoom? Well, first thing I guess I need yeah. to ask is before we go any further is, does that give everybody the opportunity to do the review of the new material or do you just want to have it presented to you from Matt and make the decision from that material? How do you want to handle this? I think if, if, if we get the material tomorrow, at least it gives us a full 24 plus hours to digest it before we rush to make a decision. You already have the material I <laughs> think it was sent to you today, wasn't it? No, we got something new from Blue Cross apparently. Okay. I haven't. I have not sent out the new proposal I got this morning from Blue Cross yet. Well, how about Thursday morning, be, uh, Commissioner Piggins? Would you be available Thursday morning about um, say nine thirty? Yeah. Commissioner Harvey. Yes, I will. Uh, Commissioner Goddard. Yes, I have another meeting at ten, but yeah, I can make nine thirty. Say what you said again, Jacob. We need to use Julie's Zoom that day, or is she using hers already? You can. That's at 11. You can have my account. Okay. Well, uh, Miss Young said we could use her account Thursday morning at 9 30. Would you be available, Commissioner Rawls? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to hereby set a meeting, a, a special meeting to discuss the reinsurance portion of our health insurance for 930 Thursday morning. Are we going to get the new Blue Cross 
proposal. Yes. Hopefully you will. get all that information tomorrow morning or this afternoon. It's getting kind of late today, but hopefully for, that'll be number one on the agenda, MAP's agenda for tomorrow to get all the information necessary to all <coughs> the commissioners where we, and then Matt can make us a presentation on Thursday morning about where we are and and why we're there, and him and Julie. Uh, actually, I think Ms. Young will probably be giving the presentation because a lot of this happened when uh, Matt was out before he became our tentative clerk. So uh, anyhow, uh, it may be presentation for whichever member of staff wants to do it, so. Mr. Uh, Chairman? Yes, sir, Commissioner Harvey. If we're, if we're gonna do it Thursday, why don't we just do it Friday after we get done outside yeah. We can easily zoom in Friday and bring Commissioner Goddard in with us at the same time. We're going to be there anyway. And we're going to make this decision either Thursday or Friday. So Does that I, give I, you enough time to respond, Julianne? Yes, sir. I believe okay. Mr. Reynolds and I are, are up to date and, and we'll be ready by Thursday or Friday, whichever the board uh, wishes. Okay. Well, we're going to try to do this time certain then. So if this, uh, if if the 9-11 ceremony starts at just before 10, and it's gonna go probably for a half hour to 45 minutes, do you think it would be safe for us to set up an 11 meeting or should we set it up at 11.30 or when do you think we should set this up, Julie? About nine. Yes, sir, I'm checking the 9-11, um, um, the, he sent out a tentative agenda. Bear with me one minute. Not a problem. You'll be looking for air conditioning after that ceremony. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. Let's <laughs> cool off a little bit. What about doing it at nine o'clock? Or 9 30. I'm good with that, Jeff. 9 30 is probably too late because of the, the 9 950, I'm sure we need yeah, to be nine o'clock. Yeah, we could do 8.30 or 9. What, what's, what's best for the commissioners? 8.30? I mean, Matt will have to come in and Julie. Julie's always here early anyhow, so uh, Matt will have to get up a little early that morning. I figured I'd get a smile out of you, Matt. <laughs> I'm good with 8.30. I'm good, good with 8.30. 830. 8.30, all right. We're going to move that special meeting to 8.30. Is that by Zoom? It'll be by virtual, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yep. Anybody that needs set up that's going to be here in their office or in the boardroom or wherever you may be, if you would contact um, uh, IT and make sure they've got accommodations for you if you're not bringing your accommodations with you. Um, I'd appreciate it. We're running a little short on webcams around here. We're having to hide them and steal them and put them in drawers and what have you. So, okay. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up, uh, Commissioner Rawls. Um, did you have anything else for us today, uh, Commissioner Rawls? No, I'm good. That's okay. It. Uh, uh, Commissioner Goddard, did you have anything for us today, sir? No, sir. I have none. Uh, Commissioner Harvey, did you have anything else for us today, sir? No, thank you, sir. I'm good. Commissioner Pickens, did you have anything else for us today? No, I'm good. Okay, and I have nothing further. <clears throat> um, the uh, county attorney's comments. Rich, do you have anything additional for us today? No, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Suggs, did you have anything you'd like to add today without coughing? No, sir. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you get the feeling better, pal. <coughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and is there anything else to come before the workshop this afternoon? Please keep in mind we got a 505, so Everybody be ready about five or a few minutes after. We'll make sure everything's still working and maybe we can get through the uh, budget presentation pretty quick this afternoon. Uh, Commissioner Harvey, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, will there be a new uh, Zoom meeting going, email going out to us? Yes, sir. We'll send out a new link. Thank you. You should already have it, I believe. All right. Okay. Will that be it? With that being said, we're going to adjourn the uh, workshop and I'll see everybody at 5.05.